Lamar, man. We here with the last the flash. Listen, I don't know if we know what's going on, but we gonna make show you what's going on. The shit that they got on, um, on Netflix. <laughs> 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 this is where I got stuck. I just don't have to be hip hop. This way can be ballerina. This one's quite special. What it good be, hope you're just with me. This is your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. This is Military Crazy Raw. Drink champs, yappy hour, make, make some, some noise! noise! <laughs> when me and E F N started this show, we got together and we said, we wanna, we wanna give flowers, we wanna give props, we wanna give love to the people who came way before us. You know, to the icons. To literally, if this man that we're about to introduce right now, if it wasn't for him, this show wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. DJs wouldn't exist. Hit records wouldn't exist. This man has been there. He is the is all and is all. Legendary icon. They said the first time you ever heard of a scratch, period, in hip hop, it was his fingers. We gonna make sure we get a fingerprint of his fingers today. He is a legend of a legend. We are so, when we started this show seven years ago, we wanted to give this man his flowers so bad. And we are so happy today. Me and EFN has been like, this is Christmas. Even though this is a New Year's gift for you motherfuckers, this is Christmas for me and EFN. Yep. Cause we, we're gonna start this out with the flowers. Is the flowers here? Yeah. We, 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 we ain't even go right around. into it. Yeah. We're gonna start this off. These are why we drew the flowers. These are why we drew the flowers. So, in case you don't know who the fuck up we're talking about, we're talking about the one, the only, Grandmaster Flay! Man. Wow. Yo, yo, we are so happy. To have you here, and I'm so happy that you're you're like crazy because you got you got notes. Yeah. <laughs> you and Cormac I think is the only people who came with notes. I'm a, I'm a geek. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I do and things mathematically and, yeah. uh, and with science. That's that's right. pretty much right. how I, how I do things. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna start this off. We're gonna start this off. We're gonna get straight to it. Um, did you ever do cocaine with Rick, um, James? <laughs> 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 no, actually, no, actually, Rick James, Rick James was a a, a musical mentor okay. to me. Okay, wow. so this is this is what I mean by that. Um, uh -huh. We were on tour, uh -huh. and our tour bus, buses were close together. And I seen Rick, and Rick sat me down and said, "Them records you got is really big, man. Mm. You're publishing." Should be huge. Wow. Yo, Nori, I said. You didn't know about you? publishing at this time? I said, what is it? I thought about, I thought it was a book. You didn't say what is publishing. No, you, didn't, you did not no, answer no, what is right. publishing. You still right. say publishing right. with books. Right. 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 I, I, yeah, because you right. books are published. Right. Right. Author, author. So me and Rick, we talking, he broke it down to me what it was. Mm. So when we got back home from the tour, you know I went to the office. Now, what tour is this? The Furious Five tour? At the oh. Grandmaster Fest Furious Five tour. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. Went, 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 Back to the office and I started asking questions. <laughs> right, right, you right, should. Right. Started asking. Let's just, let's just say, uh -huh. you know, things got a little rocky. Mm -hmm. You know, things is got a little strange because you got to realize coming from the hood and doing this thing in the streets, we was kings. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. To go into the record business, we didn't know what this shit was. You right. know what I mean? So uh, let's just say, without me going too long into the story. Right. Things started to get really, really strange. Right. right. Because you could be an expert of what you do in the streets. Right. 
But getting in the record business, there's just so many legal factors. There's so many things that you don't understand how it works. And it works in layers. Legal, this, that, that, that. Uh, got really rocky after that. Right. And I just want to say that I thank God that I had so many people that loved me then, that love me now, mm -hmm. right. and understand that I am one of the architects, mathematically and scientifically, of this culture. Right, absolutely. So with or without records, I still would have been here. Right. You know, so, but for me, I can honestly say, didn't have a fucking clue about the record business at that time. Right. We and were Rick street was kings. the one who, um, Rick, Rick, Rick put me, put us on to the record business. Right. Put me on about certain things, how publishing works, and this and that and that. And then when I asked the questions, did you hear about royalties back then? Yes. To, okay. I heard roughly about royalties, okay. but the publisher thing didn't have a clue about that, you know, okay. so. And there was a lot of other business factors that I didn't know about. Right, uh, right. To find out about it late in the game, right. shit got really ugly. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Uh, that's pretty much it. And it's right. crazy that even as early in the game that you got in, in terms of hip hop being monetized, and still it took decade, almost a decade or more for hip hop to get hip to the publishing game and the, and the, and the legalities of, of the industry and how the industry was working. Right, like for example, um, <clears throat> me being the, the, the first human sampler. Like, right. even the lawyers at that time couldn't figure out this division of music is taking a portion of an existing composition wait, and, wait. They, and they're inserting it into a new composition. How do we quantify that? Right. The music business couldn't figure out even how to quantify it. And it got down to the point where they finally got smart. Even James Brown's, huh, you had to pay royalties on it if right. you inserted it into a new composition called the sampling. Okay, come on. <laughs> Because we had, I think we had someone on here, and they said that Marley Marr was the first person to sample on record. But you're saying you're the first person to, to sample, period? What he's doing, I, what he invented. What okay. I actually invented okay. was sampling. Yeah. Okay. What I actually invented is human sampling. I took a particular area of the uh, existing composition, preferably the area where the, where there was no singing. Just the drummer and maybe light accompaniment it might be the drummer and the bassist, the drummer and the right. flutist. Mm -hmm. And when I did this with two copies of record, this particular area of the song was 10 seconds long. That pissed me the fuck off. Wow. So I had to figure out a way. How can I take this 10 seconds from this pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, Caribbean, Latin, just one particular section and elongate it just enough mm. so that the breakers could have a steady beat to dance on. Later, it became the music bed for the, for rap. the rapper to speak on. Right. Today, they called it rap. Back then, we called it MC. Right. Woo! <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie, I gotta make some noise. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but, but wait, we, well, go ahead. Hold on, because we still didn't get a yes or no if you sniff coke with Rick No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, cool, man. <laughs> Moving no, on, then. No, 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 no. I love Rick. I just have to establish that. I, I, the dogs are running. You never said yes or no. I just, you know what I mean? I it's all good. It's all good. But, but I know, because I feel like we're jumping a little bit further than I would want to at okay, least. Let's I go wanna, back. I want to go back. Let's go back. What's you, because you started this, you were a kid. Yes. When you started doing this. So... Who, who's around you? What has influenced you? What is happening in shaping hip hop at this time? Where are you at when, when Herc's doing the parties? Like, where is this all beginning for you? My beginning was, <clears throat> my father was an avid collector of records, but he's, his main job was uh, track repairman in New York for the subway system. Right. Wow. My dad had this closet and the rules in the Sadler house was this. Never go in that closet where dad's music lives and do not go into the living room where the brown box lived. And as a single digit toddler, I was wondering, why is that? Mm -hmm. Dad would come home, mom would feed him his dinner, he'd get his alcoholic beverage, he would go to this closet and he would open this closet and E, 
there was these square things with art on it. A train, flowers, people, picture of a can. I'm wondering, what is he going to do with that? Right. And inside this square thing, he pulls out this black circular thing. I wasn't allowed in the living room unless I was accompanied by an adult. He's an adult. <laughs> so I follow him into the living room where the brown box lives. He pulls out this circular brown a black thing, he puts it inside this brown box. Spinal. And this arm thing goes up, the record goes down, and, for a kid and looking sound at that. comes <laughs> out of the brown box. I thought my dad was a fucking magician. <laughs> How did he pull this off? I say He's to myself, I, I, I say to myself, guys, I'm gonna watch dad. Dad comes home about five, six o'clock. Mom feeds him his food. He goes over to the closet. The routine. I'm following him for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> I said to myself when he was at work, hmm, what if I went, so I went to the kitchen, got a chair, dragged it over to the closet, because the knob was kind of high. Turn the knob, open it. I see many of these square things in this closet. I, I grabbed the nearest one. Now, remember now, I've been watching him, yeah. the routine. So I take the nearest square one, I pull out the circular thing, I go over to the brown box, I watch him do the routine, how he press the button, he puts it on this stick thing, it sits up, the arm goes up, the vinyl goes down, what's it called vinyl? I didn't know what it was called. Right. The arm goes down, music comes out of there, I'm dancing in the living room. Mom comes in the living room and says, Dad, am I allowed to say? Yeah, yeah, you can, whatever, it's free. Dad, well, I'm gonna use, cause moms didn't curse, um, God rest her soul. Dad is gonna tear your, your backside up. So, I'm getting nervous, I'm taking the black thing off, I'm putting it back into the square thing, I'm going back to the closet, and I put it in the closet, and I close the door. I'm scared as fuck, right? Dad comes home. He does the routine. He goes to the closet. He opens the closet. We're all home. Violet, come here. Cometa, Penny, Lily, Little Joe. Who was in my closet? Uh. Violet, which I think was his favorite. Oh, Dad, you know I don't mess with your records. And Cometa said, oh, I don't. I got my own records. And Penny's like, no. And Lily was too young. She was the youngest. So by the time he's getting to me, I'm like this. <laughs> I get my hiney tanned. I get my dinner fed to me, I have to go to bed early. Now I have to figure out, not when he comes home from work, but when he leaves. So my dad had this pouch because he was a track man, he had all his tools, and I can hear the pouch go over his, his shoulder, clink. The door opens up, the door slams, I wait. I go back in the kitchen, I get the chair, I drag it over the closet. I pull out the nearest one. After a while, it was like me getting my hiney tanned and my dad just not being able to stop me doing this. Mm. Mm. Eventually, dad left, left mom to take care of all of us. I come from the projects, 2732 Avenue. I was on welfare, the food stamps, the whole nine yards. You know, moms had to take care of us. I still hadn't understood where the music was coming from. Mom was a seamstress. When mom wasn't looking, I went into her plastic needle case and I grabbed a needle. I grabbed this needle, I turned the stereo partially on so that the arm went and go up, and I took the needle and I put it down on the black disc. I felt vibration coming through my fingers. Oh, the music lives in the black tunnels. Mm. From this point on. I got goosebumps, my nigga. Hold on. I'm sorry, man. This shit is getting real. Go ahead.
from this point on, I figured out where the music was coming from. As I got older, I now wanted to, I just could not understand how is it, what is that little red light when dad pushes his button and everything in the house that was operable, let's say, was being plugged into this thing, into the wall. I'm like, what are these two little holes in, and how are things happening? So as a young teenager, I was unscrewing the back of everything, the stereo in the living room, the, the table radio, reverse my, sister, my sister's hair dryers and the whole shit. I became public enemy number one in my crib. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hair dryer didn't work. Violet was saying, Joe! <laughs> if the table radio didn't work, the stereo didn't work, the TV didn't work, because when I opened up the back, y'all, I seen these things that look like light bulbs in the back. I'm like, what are these things? When I opened up the hair, opened up the hair dryer, I would see these little tiny different colored objects in it. My mom said, listen, you have to stop doing this. I'm going to have to send you somewhere that you can, so that you can understand what it is that you are doing because you're taking apart this stuff, but you can't put it back together. She sent me to Samuel Gompers Vocational and Technical High School. Mm. And this is where I learned about Tesla, Westinghouse, Banneker, Right. Elon Musk Tesla? No, Nikolai. No, I'll Nikolai oh, Tesla. I'll, I'll, I'll fuck with y'all. <laughs> this is where I learned about amplitude modulation, AM, mm -hmm. frequency modulation, FM, solid state versus vacuum tubes. What is an ohm meter? What is a signal generator? These are the things that you diagnose circuits. What is a breadboard? What is a resistor? What is a capacitor? What is a transformer? What is a step up, step down transformer? What is a diode? What is a vacuum tube? Now I got to understand what these things was and how they worked. Mm. So, once I understood what Tesla did, which is alternating current, and Edison did direct current, now, Behind the projects of the Throsnex project, behind 2730 Dewey Avenue, there was a junkyard. People threw out their stereos, burned out cars, burned out stuff was back there. So now, E and Nori, I'm dragging this stuff inside the crib. <laughs> my moms, my sisters is like, what are you doing? I started to understand how I could take this piece from here and this piece from here and this piece from here and start building my own amplifier. Mm. Mm. To build my speakers, I had to understand how they work. Because you had your own speakers, right? I built my own speakers. So listen to me carefully, guys. We get ready to go. We get ready to go into the rabbit hole. I didn't do this on any other show. The difference between you and Herc is that you had your own speakers and Herc bought all speakers. Herc had a pretty, pretty sound system. My system was shit, so it's a huh. difference. But, <laughs> but here's the difference. <laughs> With me, I had to figure out how the speaker works. So I say my way was math and science. So math is bars how to count them frontwards and backwards. This is what right. DJs do, right? The science is kinetic energy. And here's how I went, went about understanding. That's why when I can't you, be a DJ. I ain't that smart. <laughs> when you put the vinyl on the platter and you allow it to spin up to speed and you put the needle on the vinyl, the movement of air is kinetic, kinetic energy. Right. Out of the turntable, it goes into the receiver, it becomes electrical energy. Out of the back of the receiver, it goes to the speakers, it returns back to kinetic energy. That's science. Right. There are those, and I, I look at Wikipedia, I'm so angry at them. I came up with this, of building an amplifier, and human sampling from no one. Mm. My mom taught me what the value of a needle was, and my father kicking my ass taught me the value of what 
vinyl was. Mm. Samuel Gomp has taught me how to put it all together. So when I go up on the turntables, this is what made me fall in love with DJing. The disco DJ. Yo E, Maboya, Larry Levan, Grandmaster Flowers, Pete DJ Jones. When they play, they don't play like us, but they blend. And they might be between two With, records uh, for fucking five minutes. And I'm like watching them and I'm watching, I'm hearing the other record arriving while the other one is departing. I'm like, <coughs> oh my God, Seamlessly these people too. are amazing on what they do. But you and I, we have a shorter runway. Right. Mm. So I had to figure out how to connect a short runway in a short amount of time. The right way to DJ is picking up the tone arm and putting it down and letting the record play. That's the way a lot of the DJs played before me. The ones that weren't weren't disco DJs. It is absolutely impossible to pick the tone arm up and drop it back down on the beat and keep the floor rocking. Right. It's impossible. Pete DJ, Pete DJ Jones gave me a term when I met him. He says, people that cannot keep the beat on time, it's called train wreck DJing. Mm. I did not want to be that. Mm. So I had to figure out how like the DJs would play the turntable, the vinyl, and the mixer the right way. By the time I figured out how to do this, I had to play the vinyl, the mixer, and the turntable the wrong way. This is the way that me and you play. Right. It's called the quick mix theory. I grew up in a home where it was pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, Latin, Caribbean, jazz, all of it. So where I come from, music has no color. Right. Dope music is just dope music. So now, when I listen to Curtis Mayfield's song called Move On Up, mm. that break, and that song was made in 1970, I would notice when my, when my moms or my cousins were giving house parties, when the drum party came, the heinies would move more. So in my mind, I said to myself, that's the best part right. of the record. But when I started listening to other records, I noticed that that part was incredibly short. Mm -hmm. That made me so fucking angry. And that's when I had to figure out, how can I take this part that's like five, 10 seconds and elongate it 10 minutes seamlessly so the people on the dance floor wouldn't have a clue of what I was even doing. No other DJ gave me this inspiration. The disco DJs taught me the law of being a DJ. Mm. Respectfully for people who's on the dance floor. Heads should go like this if you're playing good times. Heads should go like that if you're playing Queen. Heads should go like that if you're playing Jay-Z. Heads should go like that if you're playing Drake. Is DJ it should you? not be, hold on. Okay. <laughs> head should not, when the DJ transition, head should not be going like this trying to find a beat. <laughs> that is breaking the law of transition, DJing. And that's where my shit comes from. Right. Is DJ Hollywood considered a, a DJ, a disco DJ? When I met Hollywood, he was bigger than disco. And he was actually king in the discos. Okay. And he was actually one of the first DJs I seen that was able to have four or five parties in one night. Like we would set our, set our equipment up and play for nine to four in the gymnasium or whatever, whatever. This motherfucker was <laughs> playing 11 o'clock at Club One in Manhattan, and then maybe 12 to one in Brooklyn, Club Two, and then right. Club Three in Staten Island. This motherfucker was getting cake, 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 cake. I consider him uh -huh. like one of the smartest in the game at that time because he got five, he got five checks. <laughs> right. He was doing this shit, but he was, he was doing it disco. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Smart That's why man. I broke them up because you, you said disco. Yeah. I know we bouncing around a little bit. Yeah. But what is the what is the term? What's the first time you heard the term MCN? The first time I heard the term MCN. And so when I took the microphone, all right, I was playing in 63 Park, Bronx. It's DJing. People were looking at the table. What is this magic trick and this shit he's doing? I needed somebody uh. to take the attention off of me. Right. So I put a microphone on the other side of the table, Nori. Right. And anybody that could talk to this new style of DJing. <laughs> Lots of motherfuckers was whack, but it was this one guy that I eventually met. His name was Keith Wiggins. Street name was Cowboy. Mm. Keith Cowboy? Keith Cowboy. Okay. If I played Apache or played whatever, he had a way of having the crowd, I call it hip hop aerobics almost. He had him here, so now, being the shy geek person that I was, I can go to my collection and go in because Cowboy going to stay with right. me. Right. I asked him, do you want to stay with me so that we could go to different parks and different areas to do this? And he said, why not? That's the first time I heard MCing. Okay, let me interrupt you a little bit because, all right, but what are you playing? If this record wasn't made, what are you actually DJing? I'm playing Apache, I'm playing Rufus Thomas, I'm okay. playing an Incredible Bongo Band, I'm playing. Okay. Oh, okay. man. I'm getting oh, I'm, 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 like, I'm playing Curtis Mayfield, I'm playing uh, Early Mandrill, I'm playing um, Early Barry White, I'm playing. I'm in my I'm in my head okay. right now. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to establish this. I want to establish this for all the listeners listening. <laughs> all You're right. saying the very first hip hop parties <laughs> didn't play hip hop. <laughs> Now, wait, wait, what he was doing was inventing I mean, just think about what it. became no, no, the... No, just, just think about the, the logic of what you're just saying. Like, because this is a hip-hop party. Well, remember, gotta, Nori, hip-hop isn't just the music of it. But we that's still, the thing. And but that's, we still got to... So it's hip-hop happening, hip -hop happening. Hip-hop happening, But the music, yeah. the rapping side of it, that's the what I'm MC saying, the irony was, was of developing when he came out. They actually wasn't playing hip-hop. Okay, see, <laughs> see now, see, this is where we differ. Yeah, okay, so okay. The, the question is this. Okay. What was hip-hop back then? Then. Right. Okay. Hip hop was a regurgitation of using songs that already exist. Exactly. Some of our dopest songs were white records and right. black right. records and foreign records and American records. Mm -hmm. They were R and B. They were disco. They were mm -hmm. jazz. They were Latin. They were. But we had to find that little you just drum find the breaks, beat. the grooves, right. Right. right? So when yeah. I started playing, I can remember guys that used to use what I call heavy on the tone arm type DJing. Right. And as Pete would say, train wrecking. I was probably the most hated DJ during this time. It's because connoisseurs are very careful about how they handle their record. Like newborn babies, they take it out of the, the white sleeve, right? <laughs> and they carefully put it on the turntable. And they, they're very careful with it. When they're finished with it, they take it out off the turntable. They put it back into the right. white paper and they carefully put it into the jacket. <laughs> Me, I took two copies of the motherfucking record and just slammed it in one jacket. I was putting crayon marks on it and the whole shit so it could mark, so I could mark the break because I played in dark places and I had to be able to find it immediately. Right. Because remember, our runway was really short. So when people found out that I was putting, I was the first DJ to make records dirty, I tried getting jobs in clubs. Motherfuckers was like, yo. And some of the DJs that was playing at that time were my friends. I'm like, yo, tell the boss, man, let me get a job. They're like, yo, Flash, they know about you, man. Like, you you moved the record back and forth. You put your fingers on it. You, you <laughs> put crayon marks in it. I couldn't get a job to save my motherfucker. <laughs> Even though they were young records. Right. Right. Why, why, why do they care right, what you're right. doing? <laughs> but they figured maybe I probably was going to spread that formula to their fucking DJ. Right. Yeah, so it wasn't until um, I went to this club on the off days on 167th Street in Jerome, and these Italian guys owned this disco club called Disco Feel. All right. Come on, Disco yeah. Fever. Yeah. Disco Fever. <laughs> 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 so I go in there, 
and I meet Ali and Sal. Sal's the son, Ali's the father. And I say to them, well, uh, do, do, do you think I could get a night in here? Because Sal already heard of me, and I found that out recently. He went to the park and seen this thing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got to him, I was like, yo, Sal, you think I could get a Saturday night in your club? He looked at me like I was fucking crazy, right? And he says, no. He says, what I will do is I'll give you a Tuesday. Mm. I was angry as a fuck, and he said, Flash, if you do this, I promise you, this is gonna make you huge. I was angry at first. Two months later, Tuesday was rivaling Saturday. Then I got a Wednesday. So this is when I started playing in clubs with this. So I bought hip hop into Disco Fever, and the people that I used to come there, Hector Macho Camacho, the Gap Band, like all the big stars that if they were in town, right. they came to Disco Fever. Did Hector Macho Camacho do cocaine in the club? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody gotta do cocaine somewhere, man. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Drugs. Yeah. I'm fucking with you. I'm yeah, yeah, so good. So yeah. good, man. So I mean, so you know how old are you at that time? Oh man, I was the disco fever, I wanna say in my early twenties, maybe. Crazy. What, okay, what is considered the first hip hop club? Oh. You know, that's hard to say because when we was playing in the parks, and this is where I kind of step out of this. Okay. In my humble opinions, I do not think a DJ came up with the title H-I-P-H-O-P. -P. Oh yeah, we had- Didn't they up. say Cowboy did? They said Cowboy or Love Buck Starsky, but they both were rappers. So it's still up for whatever- Up for debate? Debate. Where he came from. I personally think, in my opinion, when he was doing this early, early, early on, I think that it didn't have a title yet. Mm -hmm. I think we were creating something because the monster at that time was disco. And with disco, you had, you had to have all the hard bottoms, suit jacket, no jeans, no hoodie. Like, we dressed the way that we dressed. It was, it was a counter a, to disco, if anything. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So as disco was fading, right. hip-hop came alive, but musically... And how it happens is the graffiti artist was already out there. And I was told by these other breakdancers that they were already out there as well. Mm. They connected to Herc and to Flash and to Bam. The rapper as we know it, because we jack shits, we jack words from other things. Right. So when they say emceeing, emceeing really means, like I'm talking to you right now, and I'm a master of ceremonies, right. and, I'm, and I'm sort of presiding over the room, and I'm speaking. But we jack shit to call it something else. Me, I think that emceeing is rhythmically talking to the beat of a DJ's rhythm. That's what I, 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 I personally call it. All right. So it started with Keep Cowboy. That's what no, I that's, say. That's what, yes, that's what some say. Okay. That's what I no, say. What, what, okay. The, the others say, you know, and this is where I, I, I'm, I'm really. Cass said uh, it too. Uh, Cass uh, said Cowboy here as well. I'm kind of confused. It's because. Okay, put it this way. Cool Herc, incredible, incredible sound system. He played incredible music. His crew, Coca Rock. Timmy Tim, Clark Kent. Well, I'm say Coca Rock was um, one of the, the first, first MCs. Uh, MC too, as well. When I went to go see them, Coca Rock was a DJ. Mm. So I don't understand where that comes from. Mm. Mm. So if MCing, if we jack the word MCing from the masses, and it's defined as a human being who talks rhythmically on the beat of music, wasn't nobody doing that back then. We all had echo chambers. Herc had the best echo chamber. Mm -hmm. We were just blabbing out whatever. Right. But serious speaking to the beat of music, 
maybe I'm going crazy. I didn't see that yet. It hadn't happened yet. And this is why I'm saying out of all the four elements, the rapper did come last, but they are undisputedly the crown jewel of right. all of this. They took this thing where it, where it had to be. And I'm saying there was no steady beat for them to rhyme on at that time because people were using the, turn, the, the tone arm and the beat wasn't steady. So it would have been absolutely impossible for a rapper to rap on that. So you're saying you brought that to the game? I'm saying that I did. And, and, what they say is, and, 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 listen. I, 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 he was being very humble. I just had to spike the ball. But I had to, to spike the but ball. But to even ball. show, because yeah. I don't think people would understand what he means by picking up the tone arm. The DJ wasn't mixing, blending, and bringing it on beat. They were literally picking up the record and putting it on the record. Like, oh. But one beat was crashing into the right, other. Right, right. They weren't right. trying to make it sound smooth. Right. They were just bringing it close enough by just bringing it up and down, bringing it, just dropping the, the needle on the record. To switch the record. I'm going right. to demonstrate that when I get up there. Okay. You know, so, so, so for me, like last summer, I sit back, I watch all the press that comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, Hip Hop 50? You know, first of all, they shit it on the Bronx for years and years and years. Ah, oh, this, this place has all the fires, the political upheaval, cops taking payoffs, you know, the Bronx is fucked up, and all of a sudden now... The Bronx is the bomb now, and it's this and that, 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 and, and now it's mainstream, you know. So, so I'm saying, to, I'm, I'm saying to myself, well, if that is the case, why is it that all the press that I look at, they say it started right here in 1973, and it's in 2004? So what the fuck happened? to where it started and carefully, chronologically speaking on how it got here. Because you know why that's so important? Because people who are 18, right. 30, 40, 50, you actually have to say you were near 60 to say that you were in the park with us. Right. So. Much respect to the PR and to all the, the, the press people. There's a whole 48 years that has not been put in the press. Mm. That is unfair to people like myself, like Africa Bambada, like Cool Herc, like DJ Breakout. Why isn't this press being definitively put in so that the babies, because things work in trends. Right now, we're the shit right now. Right. But come August 4th is Grandmaster Flash Day. August 11th is Cool Herc Day. Come August 12th, there's the next fucking trend. Maybe it's microphones. Maybe it's a fucking bottle of water. Right. Uh, we, need to, we need to get this shit right now because we trending. Because after that, it goes into history, history books, incomplete right. or incorrect. And this is why I find it critically necessary that I do as much speaking. And I'm only one of four. But I want to do as much speaking as possible because, Nori, you need what? to know what? because you're an expert in your field. What? You need to know where this shit came from, like what? you said, when you opened up the show before you. Mm -hmm. You should know mm -hmm. where this come from, who, what, mm -hmm. where, and why. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I'm going to be going to all the SUNY colleges. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the YMCA, to all the babies, all the corporates. I'm doing this birth of a culture corporate tour. I'm going to go around and speak as so. much as I possibly can because I have to. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is our thing. Wow. And long after I'm going, I'd like to know that this thing is correct. Because right. me, quite frankly, a lot of people celebrate their birthday, right? I don't give a fuck about a birthday. You know what I care about? My death day. What am I leaving so that the babies could build legacy, on that? Right. That's where I'm at. So this is why I got to speak. Right. You said one of the four. What, who's the other three? Quirk. Bambada. Bambada. Breakout. Flash. The four mm. of us. Right. This shit ain't just one person at right. one time frame. 
This is a combination of a lot of things. I got a bullet point thing here, man. I'm going to go all up down. I'm a fucking geek. I'm a scientist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got I, I, I to gotta do this. Like, you know, we need to, to, to congratulate the breakdancers and congratulate yeah. the, like, the producers. Right. Why the fuck are we not talking about the producers? Because I'm telling you what I did. Human sampling. There was this machine that came into play called the computer and the sampler. They took that same piece of information and inserted it into the computer, hit the space bar, and tell the space bar to tell the computer to repeat this loop. It's the shit that I did. Mm. If we don't give love to these producers, this shit would have never become big business. Right. Mm. It's not possible. Mm. Somebody had to go in and do that. And this is why I talk about these I think it's really important that journalists interview the producer because a lot of y'all rappers, right. y'all come in and say to Ron, you get the fuck out and keep going. Right. Somebody got to stay in the room, put that bitch together. Yep. Right. And that is the producer. Right. Why aren't we talking about these people? Yeah. Premier, Dre, mm. oh shit, man, I got a fucking list. Pete, Pete Rock. Pete Rock, can I just Alchemist, go? Yes. Diamond D. Go, go, yeah, go, go, yeah. go, exactly. Havoc. Timberland, Havoc. Right, exactly. For real. We have to. Kanye keep, West, let's throw him out there. Uh, uh, yeah, come on. Yeah. Let's not forget Because about. the nine times out of ten, if you were to ask a rapper, what is truncation? What is sampling? Right. What is EQing? We don't know that shit. Right. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> they wouldn't have a clue to this. Yeah, uh. So, mm -hmm. it's just important on how I did my science, but it's just important as the producers in the studio and their science right. to deliver the master to the record companies. And then the record companies, they should get love too. Because they didn't have to put this shit out. We had, there was no right. blueprint before this to say that this shit was going to be the bomb. Right. They took a fucking chance with this shit too. The Sylvia Rones and the rest of them. They took the a first shot record too. Label Sugar Hill record? Yeah, Sylvia, Sylvia Robinson. Sylvia All Robinson, these people, yeah. they didn't have to do this. Right. right. So that we could sit here and, and live comfortable and eat mm. off this shit that we love. Mm. Right. I'm walking into the room. I'm walking into the um up to the to the to the room here that I'm in, and I'm like, oh, that's just fly ass motherfucking Maybach right there. I said, whose fucking Maybach is that? Nori looked at me and said, Hey man, <laughs> super <laughs> man. Hey man, no, no, so, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I want to okay. clear something. Yeah. You mentioned Marley Mar. What I think what he, what he said and what is that he recreated. Well, right. Flash, he was one of the first producers or the first producer to recreate that. That's what I said, on record. Yeah, on record. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that, that could yeah. be possibly yeah. true yeah. because it was Cold, sampling, right. Cold Chill and Warner Brothers yeah. was probably one of the first, but then it was Def Jam 2. You know, it, it, it's, it's up for debate, but right. the insertion of music inside of a new production and a human being speaking on it, there were three major labels that was pretty much doing that. Right. And that was Cold Chillin'. Cold Chillin' Warner Brothers. Which Cold Chillin' is Marley Marr was... Yeah, 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 yeah. and he was a producer yeah, for right. all the artists, for Big Daddy yep. Kane and Bismarck right. and all of them. You know, and then there was Sugar Hill, and then they, then came Russell Simmons with Def, Def Jam, Jam and yeah. Leo Cohen. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it just went from there. Then it was uh, Uptown Records, uh, Bad Boy Records, and it goes right. on and on and on and on and on. So this thing has so much of a story of substance. Mm. And when I look at the press that's happening, I'm like, who is controlling the narrative of the press? Because they're leaving out so many things. But but isn't it? I'm, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt. But isn't it kind of like the NBA? Like like when you look at the NBA right now, yeah. right? The NBA and, and and anybody playing in the NBA, I got so many friends, so many people who have my phone numbers. So do not call me. I'm not talking about you particularly. But the NBA kind of seems soft right now, right? And it's like okay. it's like it, and and when you compare it to the '90s, right? Mm. And it's like, if you don't have these old clips of the 90s, these people don't understand that okay. the NBA was like playing Rikers Island. Oh, it was like Rikers Island oh at one God. point. And now it's like playing in fucking Barbie Land. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like Disneyland. I'm sorry. Like, to my people, please don't hit me. I don't mean it like that. But what I'm trying to say is, Ooh. isn't it, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it, like, when you see these young kids, right? 
these young kids, they they twenty, they they twenty five and under, and they would actually sit there and be like, okay, I'm gonna go get the, the new Jordans. But they're making money through hip hop. Yes, they're making money through hip hop, but they will go and they don't. They haven't seen Michael Jordan play, right? Or Dr. But, Dre. But why wouldn't they go and Dr. go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why wouldn't they go right. do their research if they're making money through hip hop? That's right. my biggest thing. Okay. With, with this new generation is like I think you said it earlier. Like like you said, the people need to know. Yeah. And that's what I, that's they that's, need to I, want I, to know. That's the biggest problem too. Yeah, but if you they don't, don't teach even them, want to know, but you got to teach them to know. Like okay. you, you, have, you have to drop the science to these babies and say this is what it this is what it is. Now go look at go look for the rest. Right. Mm-hmm. Like when I play sometimes, depending on what country I'm in, right. Nori. I love the flex. 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 I said this man has been all over the world. 16. You know, like before COVID, I was I, I was going to 150 countries a year before Ooh. COVID. Can I tell y'all? You know, for the past. Can I tell y'all? For the past you know, 18 years before COVID. So for me, sometimes. I'll be playing the old school shit all right. ba- all the way back to our time, mm-hmm. and I see in the front row kids like around 17, 18, 19. And I, when I went backstage, I grabbed two of the kids and I said, "How do you know this stuff?" They said, "My mom, my dad, right. and my uncles, you know, mm-hmm. my aunts taught them." So it's like what you're saying, Nori. Right. You know, we as elder states people have to inform the babies. Absolutely. And this is why I'm saying the breadcrumbs from the 70s to now, you have to put all of them down. You can't just say the Bronx ain't shit and then all of a sudden in these next two years, the Bronx is the shit and it went from this to that. Right. So how the fuck did it happen? Right. And who did it? Some people lost their lives. Some people ain't here no more. Right. That helped make this shit what this shit right. is. Right. And this is why I find it really important. I think the DJ is extremely important because there was a time before the game changed, record companies like Def Jam and all the other labels used to bring me white labels Mm -hmm. one o'clock in the morning knocking on my door saying this shit is fresh off the fucking press. We need you to play this song and tell us tell us what this record is doing. We DJs. You was the influencer before influencer was our influencer. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yes, yes. And so all this constitutes the building blocks of why this thing is still here. Why don't we do this step by step by step by step by step? It's just, it, it, it just boggles my mind. Let's continue. Let's the mixtape. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. The mixtape. Okay, mix wait, 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 wait. I, I love how you control the interview. I like that. <laughs> I love that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Thank you for Oh, he shit. is the grandmaster. Okay, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no,
a minute. Whew. So, and I would look at the, the, the street pharmaceutical person and say, that's what it would cost. They said, so what? It's just all I want you to do is this. On your echo chamber, I just want you every few minutes to say my name. Because you gotta realize these street pharmaceutical people had the dopest cars, right, right. the dopest motherfucking sound systems, right, right. and they was going through. So if their name was Drink Champ, you would hear right. boom, 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 Drink Champ all through the, yeah. through the city. No, the really so the other, <laughs> the other pharmaceutical people be like, yo, where the fuck you get that customized <laughs> shit from? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got that shit from Grandmaster. Yeah. And I would, and I would say, all right, what you want? 60, 90, and 120. Some would say 90. I said $90, 120, 120. Some wanted a reel to reel. And it'd be 60 minutes sure. on one side and you reverse it. God and damn. then you record it. And that was $200. So this is the kind of, money, kind of money I was making when I wasn't making money doing the parties. I actually made more money do, doing the tapes than I was doing the parties. So now a mixtape, I think now, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like the pre-album, mm -hmm. it's like an artist that's not signed. What, mixtape? No, even signed. Today. Are, are they doing today? A, an out of their label album? A mixtape today, but okay, finish with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just trying, I'm just trying, because I don't really know what it, what it became today. So what do you think of mixtape today? Yeah, that's what, that's what the mixtape yeah. is. Finish with you, what you think I, it is? I, I'm, I'm thinking it's artists that are so dope, but they're not signed yet, and they can make money without the label. This is right. what I'm thinking. No, nah, but it's lit. it's artists that are signed as well doing yeah. street albums. But is it yeah. both? Is it either or? It's both. It's both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. Both. It's both. Because even artists like Fabulous but, has a mixtape. Yeah. Um, and he he sampled a bunch of beats, but he also actually um paid for the samples. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So um, the fact is, it's not an actual album, so it doesn't go on SoundScan as an album, but it does, I guess, because they still got to pay the producers and uh, things like that. Ultimately, if you ask a, a newer generation what a mixtape is, they just think of an artist doing a street album. Yeah, that, yeah street album. A street album. Yeah. Right. So, it's not so it could be a street album that's signed to a label or a street yeah. album that's not signed to a label. Right. right. And it could be an incredibly dope artist that's not signed right. to a label. Right. And it's well, usually using beats that they're not paying for, usually. That's what it is. That's oh. really. That's what really is what, it, what right. it, the mixtape became. They're taking right. instrumentals. They're taking whatever, and they're spitting over whatever they want, and not clearing any of these beats. Okay, so then, okay, then I want to ask you, how does the mixtape today quantify the sales? How do you know what it sold, or is it more like we called it an audio flyer, or the first right. audio DJ drama? That's how it like, 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 Yeah, like, it changed. After you yeah, got, like after they, everything went internet, I, I'm drunk. from the mix era. I, I started doing mixtapes on cassettes. Then on CDs, I didn't like it so much, but I did it. Mm -hmm. But once it, everything went internet, that to me changed what it meant, a mixtape meant. Okay. The culture of mixtapes to me ended. Because even, even like, let's say 50, he kind of like ushered in the artist mixtape. Mm -hmm. He was still putting them on CD. Uh, Dipset as well. And Dipset were huge. G -Unit, G -Unit. So okay. that's, that culture of physical, once that physical culture, Ended, I feel like kind of like the mixtape era ended in a sense. People still put stuff on streaming, say, This is my mixtape album. Okay. But and I think at first, when it got to the 50 Dipset era, I think that, that they were the first times that it wasn't hosted by a DJ, right? Or right, it was lot, well, hosted by a DJ. Well, who, yeah, who them was, who was doing most of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Still, a lot of those those mixtape albums incorporated a DJ putting it together and, and, and doing like, you know, drops for it and hosting it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So, okay, I understand. So, um, executives, you got the record labels, man. They should get some love too, man. Yeah. Not all of them. There's some, there's some, there's some fucked up people out there. No, there, there, there is, there, there, there is, but I mean, I'm gonna go with a few that I know okay. that are pretty cool. That's right. And, and I'm sure you say they fucked up when as I, as I call them to you. Let's like, see you. Sylvia Rome, that's, Electra. Let, let's make some noise, Sylvia Rome. <laughs> She just threw out a Busta Rhymes album as well. She yeah, that was, dope. that was dope. That was dope. Yeah. I love that. I love that for that. Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen, Def Jam. Yes, Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen, huh? Def Jam. Even though either of them are at Def Jam no more, Flash. Right, we gotta right. let you know that. I'm talking early on. Okay, yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking yeah, historical here. Yeah, yeah, historical, yes. Right. Uh, Tom Silverman and Monica Lynch, Tommy Boy Records. Tommy Boy Records, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't know that one. Okay, <laughs> okay. Steve Stout, RCA Records. Yeah! <laughs> I think one of Jay, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Z's first record label, Sleeping Bag Records, Will Sokoloff. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, his name is Sokolov? Sokolov. <laughs> Say it three times. Yeah. Steve, uh, Will, Will Sokolov, right? Um, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> Sylvia Robinson, Sugar Hill Records. Yeah, Sugar Hill Records, Sylvia Robinson. He, Sugar, he got the same face you had a second ago. <laughs> he got, but he still said that name, yeah. you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Steve Riskin, Loud yeah, Records. Yeah, yeah, Steve Riskin, yeah. Aaron Fuchs, Tough City Records. Okay. Okay. Fred Bounet, Select Records. That's Select Records. Right, 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 right. So there's a few, but there's so many more. And to the people that's watching and listening, right. like, if I do not say your label, or you know, or, or what you've done, it would take me, like. Five years to say all the names, so right. please excuse me. So, in the interest of time, I had to put together a, a short list right. of that. Because we could have easily added an easy with Ruthless Records or yes. Luke with Two Life with uh, Absol- absolutely with Skywalker Records right. and, uh, and a Jay Prince with Rap a Lot Records. Right. Right. right, exactly. So for me, this thing has like you know I haven't been on a train in fifty years, but if I were to get on the local, not the express, the local. Every stop is something. Every stop is something. Every stop is something. Every there's something to talk about right. until you get to here. Right. That's really, really important, man. All right. Let me, let me ask you, Flash. Aliens come down. They come down. Aliens from a different planet. A different planet. <laughs> they high as a motherfucker. Right, they high. What, they what are they on? What are they on? Shrooms? I don't know. They on alien shit. <laughs> they on <laughs> alien shit. They come to you, Flash, and they fl- Flash. We need one record to describe hip hop. One record to describe this fifty years of hip hop. This fifty one years of hip hop. They want one record. No, no. Nah, nah, this is his question, brother. Dominicans Kamate. <laughs> one record for an alien never heard him. One? Pop. Never heard him. Two? He one? Never, he, he never finger popped nothing. <laughs> he doesn't know nothing. He just an uh, alien. One Ooh. record. Nori. Can we go two? No? Let's get two. Uh, alien said, you know what? Go ahead. Oh, give you me want two. me to give you top three? Top three. To, 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 no, no, it's just two, two. two it's just two records, I think. Okay. That. And this is, this is that, that that are the absolute top. If you were to say these records help start a movement, would be Cool Herc's discovery of Apache, Ooh. Mm. and my discovery of Take Me to the Mardi Gras by Bob James. Wow. One A, one B. And, and look, for the, remember who we're talking to. There's some people that don't even understand when you say discovery of that record, what that meant. Okay, so record shopping. Mm-hmm. Digging. By the way, mm-hmm. can, can I stop you for one second? Let me just tell you something. It's your show, man. If you stop. have a DJ friend and y'all are on the road, if you ever want to do something cool for your DJ friend, Find a record store a record for him. Store, yeah. <laughs> it's Take him to a it's record store. No, it's, it's, like a it's, like, it's like leaving a gambler <laughs> <laughs> at a casino. I can take Butch Rock yeah. anywhere in the world and yeah. I can leave him at a record store and a casino and I can go out for six hours. Yeah. No one would ever know Butch Rock right. is missing. <laughs> So if you ever know to any DJ, uh, listen, yes, any sir. artist, anybody you have a, a DJ friend, mm-hmm. you go overseas or go somewhere, you can bring him to a to record shop. Or her. Her, her, her or her or they, you know, this shit is real out right now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? We don't want to fit nobody. We, everybody can use every, every bat- bathroom. Um, but if you want him to a DJ friend, you bring him to a record store and, and they will... Enjoy the shit out of they sell. By the way, these records don't have to speak English. No. It don't matter. These records don't have to be hip hop. You prefer no, the These you don't, you records don't can be ballerina. That <laughs> they can be opera. But DJs are so crazy, they can listen and be like, oh, I'm taking this. Mm. 
I'm just telling you, DJs and producers, that's a treat. Yep. I, I, I'm sorry, I gave you out a cheat code. Yeah. Make some noise for me for knowing. <laughs> there it is, there it is, there it is. So, well, record shopping. Okay, record okay. shopping. Okay. I'm in my teens. During the week, I have to do my chores and do my homework, uh, do schoolwork on the weekend. I'm getting up about 8 o'clock in the morning, getting dressed, washing my ass. I am going record shopping. Mm. I'm going to, which I think was the, really the godfather of, of eclectic records, was Downstairs Records, Nick and Barry, okay? In the village? And uh, what street was that on? 30 something street? It's been so oh, no. long. I thought I was talking about the one by Grace. That, that, that one was much later. Okay. So, okay. I would go down to Downstairs Records and Nick and Barry would, hey, Flash, how you doing? I'll say, uh, I just want to go through some stuff because somehow or another, these two white boys knew how to go out and get records that would possibly work. That's crazy. So they're like curating before you guys. Yeah, so I'm in there. Actually, Nick and Barry would have two rooms. There's the public room that people come in from the street. Then there's the room yeah, in the have back. The VIP. You have VIP before VIP. I respect it. Go ahead. We in there all day on the turntable. I'm in there looking at the cut. One, I'm holding the record up in the air because you could see the break on the record. Ooh. And how you could see this, the area of the composition has a bright spot. So that tells you that the most of the band members are not playing, the right. singer's not playing in that area. I would find that pop record, put it on. All I needed was four bars. I'm buying two copies of that. Mm. That was the love there. But then you would go to the big stores where, I, where you have no clout. Like there was a store on, what was this 34th Street and 8th Avenue called Disco Mat. And this motherfucker, this store must have been the size of a Walmart. <laughs> so you just in there just searching. And I would go to the pop section and rock all of them. And I would look at the cover. That's what spoke to you first. That would speak to me first. Yeah. And I remember this one particular one was, I was in a rock section. The fucking album said, Toys in the Attic. I'm like, who the fuck wants to put their toys <laughs> in the attic? I held it up, put it down. I said, I'm gonna just think about that and just search for others. But that shit was talking to me. In disco, man, no privileges. Once you break the street rap, you buy it. If there's nothing on it, you fucking stuck with it. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the cash register and pay for some, I call it a stiff. That's what Scram Jones still call it. And I went over to the turntable and I played most of the records. Whack, 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 whack. <clears throat> But the drum break in the front of that shit, I'm like, oh my God. This group was new then. Columbia Records. Didn't nobody know much of who they was. And they had this, they had a really real weird name. Arrow Smith. <laughs> And the cut on it, I would have missed it because the end of the cut prior, it got, it got the wah, 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 this, this nasty fucked up guitar piece, but I stuck with it and, and I let it play and then it got quiet onto the next section. I was like, oh my God, I'm taking two of those. Hmm. But there are times, E, when I look at the album cover and the fucking shit was whack. <laughs> but I bought two of them. I, I got to go to the cash register and buy them. And in my room, mom's house, these, I had a stiffs crate. So this is the purpose of this crate. When you're playing, sometimes DJs from other camps 
You know, because some weeks it's Herx, and the crowd, most of the crowd's coming to see him. Sometimes it's Flash, sometimes it's Breakout, sometimes, you know, it's whoever. They'll send spies. You won't know who they are, but they, 20 feet away, they looking at the label. So this is what I did. I took the two copies of the stiffs that I'm stuck with, and I soaked them in the bathtub. And I soaked the heat in the bathtub too, until the label came up, and then I switched them. So now, follow me. <laughs> So when that DJ would come there seeing what that shit was, and I got to tell you years later, we all laughed. They said, Flash, we cleaned our house, cooked the food, let the fucking album play, and the break was never there. <laughs> right, right. We had a way of keeping our secrets, but today, right. uh, you know, I, 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 all, there's, there's no more secrets. I think it's important that the kids know, but... We had to have a way. I used to mark the record with magic marker or scrape the label out and, and call it, if the shit was called fucking Fiji, I'll call the shit Can, C-A-N. Right. So now the motherfuckers go looking for a record called Can. Like we had to have secrets, we had to. That's wild. To keep our fans. All right. And that's what Record Shop was me. And I might Record Shop from nine in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And I may go to a Record Shop and find, one, uh, 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 one, and it's only one copy in the fucking store. Now I'm like, I'm like, yo, you can't get another one. He said, man, this is a small label and this is all they had. One copy. Now, I'm calling stores in Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island. Do you have a fucking, do you have this record? Because you had to have two. I mean, why and, did you have to have two? So he could bring it back, keep looping it. Right, to continue it. And this is their version of having an exclusive that's right. why he's saying they're hiding the record so the other DJs camp can see right. and get that record. Exactly. So that drum beat, I, to contain that drum beat, Nori, I had to continue it. But I had that shit covered because I didn't know who was in the building right. and I wanted my fans to stay with me. So I wanted all my heat to stay with me. Um, Herc was always up high. Bambada had goons. Breakout was way up in the north. So everybody was just protecting their own shit. But record shopping, I can remember going for 12, 13 hours and not finding it, getting up Sunday and going again. And just trying to, calling around, calling around, begging, pleading. I need one more copy of this record. Sometimes the copy would be printed and it might be a red label, but the same album, somebody reprinted it. It might be a white label, you know what I'm saying? And I got two odd labels. I didn't give a fuck. This is long as I was able to keep that beat going and keep that crowd rocking. And these are the things that, you know, I, I, I find very important to talk about. Absolutely. But let me ask you, because what you're saying and you're describing right there is no. you're describing a DJ like being a producer, right? That's actually kind of like, this that's is the, kind of the producer. This is production. So, so it's kind of like to say if you do it the way that you're describing. Which is the wrong way. You, <laughs> because you, you don't play a turntable that way. Right. I came up with the wrong way. Yeah. Right. But your theory is the wrong way. He but revolutionized what you, that. But what you're saying is basically if you're a DJ, you're an automatic producer. But if you're a producer, it doesn't automatically make you a DJ. Right, but I'll tell you this much. Okay. And we're gonna, we go, we're gonna go back to the producers. If there were 50 producers on the first batch that went out in the 80s, 48 of them were DJs. Mm -hmm. That understood the law mm -hmm. of a seamless loop. Right. Mm. So from Dre to Pete Rock to Premier, to Battle Cat, yeah. you know, to the, uh, Chris the Glove Taylor, all of them, they were DJs. Mm. So they knew how one, to make a seamless loop, which I'm gonna show you what that is over there. Oh, we but we use it in the sampler, insert it, add new kicks, snares, make that shit sound incredible so the rapper can come in and say what he can say, then he'll go leave. Mm. And then it's the producer and that track and making that track as fat as possible. Mm. That's what uh, the majority of the DJs uh, at that time mm. coming out, that made all them incredible records, Q-Tip, all of them, they were DJs. Uh. And that's why all them records to this day, like if you, if you in a club or you in a spot where you playing for a couple of hours, it is almost impossible to not have to go back there and grab one or two. 
Mm. It's almost impossible right. because that music never died. It's all still here, pretty much. So I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. 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 Now you said that's the first beat machine in hip hop. Oh yeah, beat, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What is no. that? Yes, yeah, the, the beatbox. Beat okay. It's called the beatbox. Beatbox. Yeah, I always um, thought Dougie Fresh was the beatbox. No. Okay, so now see, me, me, me and Dougie gonna talk right after. We, we gonna talk uh, later on today too. Okay. So, Nori, mm -hmm. this was my secret weapon. Okay. Every DJ back then had turntables, right? Now there was this guy. Uh, name escapes me. He lived in the Jackson Projects, and I would hear this machine being played out the window. I made it a point to keep going back there, keep going back there, keep going back there, until finally I met this guy. Right. And I asked him, what was it that he was playing? He was playing this. He was a drummer. Mm -hmm. But when he would practice, he would practice with this. I said to myself, if I can learn how to play this just basic, I could come off the turntables and jump on this. Oof. So Ray Chandler, our manager at that time, said, we're going to put that on the flyer. Secret weapon, the beatbox. The Furious came up with a song. It was a party night. Uh -huh. and the flash was on the beatbox. Uh -huh. I was on this. Damn. And people. <laughs> so. Fucking up my childhood. Like, <laughs> so. This became a secret weapon, and this got us more, more fans. Um, years went by later, and there were these super people, I called them, Biz Marquis, rest in peace, Dougie Fresh, right. that decided to replicate the sounds of a drum with their mouth, and they made huge records wow. off of this. But this is this box that I found, and I called it the beatbox. Wow. So I'm gonna just mess around a little bit. Yeah, I gotta got do this. And Mel and the boys wrote a song on it. So now, see, Nori, these are the kind of things that I'm talking about, and I appreciate you. That was the first. You, 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 huh? That's the first MPC. You, you like, could, you could say it's the first, it. first drum, drum machine in hip hop. Yeah. Period. Wow. Wow. Predecessor for Casio. Yeah, the Casio, Casio didn't even have a C yet. It wasn't even C on Casio. Oh. It wasn't around yet. You know, this is why I, I found it critically important to come here, and I appreciate the EFN and, 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 and Nori for allowing me to uh, expound, mm -hmm. expound on this. We appreciate you because I'm dragging you guys in and out of the rabbit hole. No, we love it. Oh, this is why we started. Yeah. Okay, so, so, this song right here. <laughs> some of 1970s when it was made. Ooh, ooh. Curtis Mayfield. to my mom's house or my cousin's house, the backside used to move more. And it's break E still going. Still going. Now, I thought back then, and I was 12 or 13, all records have the break like that. But when they didn't, that's when I became very angry. <laughs> and that's when I had to come up with this thing where I extended the break. So now, uh, let's, I'm gonna move through a couple of things here. I'm gonna try to stay within the five second law. I'm gonna try to do that, okay? Right. Do what you gotta do. We got okay? it. 
So the genius of the producers, Dr. Dre, like, like they, they all love me. Dre loves me. And he's as huge as he is, he's not afraid to say that I inspired him to do what he right, does. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So. of the producer to put this in a computer and a sampler and the incredible rhymes of Nas. Ooh. Let's continue on. Ooh. And some of these records were pop, they were rock, they were jazz, they were blues, they were funk, they were disco, they were R&B. You know, so when people ask me, Nori, to do a set, I play pop rock, I, 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 they're like, what the, f no, no, what the fuck you doing? I'm saying, I'm playing a hip hop set. I'm playing what I know. Right. This song here has the, has the worst name in the, name in, in, in the world. Uh, Sweet Green Fields, Seals and Crofts. The, the producer that did this one. The producer that did this one. The producer that followed me. So all the producer did is take this seamless loop theory that falls under the quick mix theory and made big records. Why does the press talk about this? Buster was in front of me. I would keep the beat steady. Buster can, can still do it. Let's continue on. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let's go here. Uh. Let's go a little further. 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 Check the rhyme. Check the rhyme. Yep. And it's crazy he's showing you the genius of what he started and how that transcended to production. This one's quite special. This record probably would have been double lead, never sold a copy until this incredible rapper put his voice on this beat. One of my favorite.
some disco. Let's play 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 some disco. But the motherfucking producer just said to himself, mm, let me, let me slow this down. And These are the things the press is not talking about. Why not? Jazz, Herb Albert. Who in this room gave a fuck about this record, nobody? I watched the press last last summer. Right. I'm like, how on earth? How on earth could he let stuff like this goes by? I'm sure Bam got a story. I'm sure Breakout got a story. I'm sure Hurt got a story. So now. Should, should I wait for her? Nah, we can keep talking about Okay. Talk. Let's get geek. I'm going to take you guys down the rabbit hole. Let's go. Let's go over to the, to the easel. I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, guys. This took much thinking because the way DJs play music, the right way was heavy on the tone arm. But in order for me to be, to connect a short runway, I needed a quicker way to do this. This took me about two and a half years to put this formula together because I kept saying to myself, the non-disco DJs are heavy on the tone arm. The disco DJs, they're heavy on the tone arm. I have to stay heavy on the tone arm, and it turned out that I couldn't. Right. And here's my formula. It's called the Quick Mix Theory. This is the, this is pretty much the math in me. And this is how I did hey, it. Wait, guys. how old are you coming up with this? How old are you now? About fifteen. F look at this. <laughs> Come on, we 15, got this. You 16. gotta put that into perspective. About fifteen, sixteen. So. And there are DJs that make incredible sounds with this, but I'm not talking about the sound. E, I'm talking about the mechanics. Right. The reason why you do it. And here's the math, guys. Four bars forward equals six counterclockwise revolutions equals oh, man. full yeah. loop extraction. And I'm going to do this on the turntables in a little while, but I'm going to show you. We, need to, we deep in the rabbit hole right now, guys. Final one. Can you watch out so I can see? Clockwise. Thank you. My drawing is fucked up. I'm not good like that, DJ Mixer.
of this round table. And this one is going counterclockwise. Counter. And is this without you cueing it in headphones? Is this why? You can, but I didn't, I didn't figure that out until later. Right. But you could. But you're absolutely correct. Counterclockwise. So, four bars forward is equal to six counter clockwise revs are EVs. This way of DJing, the mechanics of this has not changed no. 50 years. Does not. I said something on <coughs> the internet many years ago. I'll put up 10 grand for anybody that can do this without using my mechanics. Not the machine, not a computer. I'm talking about human beings like you and me. Right. Let's see, still waiting. Hey, you wanna do the honest man? So, God is wonderful. I've been able to, Nori, Trying to figure out what's going on. With you, okay. EFN. I did this when I was 16. I'll be 67 in a week and a half. God is absolutely wonderful. I can Bring bring chair in for Scram Jones. Let's bring Scram Jones in. Um. Because I want to get into the music, but before we get into that, yeah. where's somewhere you played overseas that you was just like, wow, that you was shocked that you you went to? Brazil. Brazil? 90,000 people. Ah. See, but there were a few that played 60,000. On the average, I played 25,000, 15,000 now. Light work. And right. I don't, I don't do, I'm, I'm Light work. Light work. Um, you put them over there by E, oh, on that side, my bad. Yeah, over there on that side, yeah, yeah, by E, my bad. Oh shit, come on, you're supposed to be holding the chair, not Jamie, <laughs> Jesus. The yeah. Scram. Ring a scram yeah. in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Scram jiggy. I call this dude super fingers. Fuck, I want to do the fuck. Scram Jones. You just want to shine? Get out of here, bro. <laughs> we ain't going funny Jones, it's that Scram Jones. 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 Yeah. 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 So you said Brazil is... is, is 90,000 people. Yeah? Scared the shit out of me. Really? What was really cool about it, it's like, the big EDM DJs, they do that shit on a regular. Right, right. right. So when I first okay, got, got into like, playing with them on a the lineup, I remember my, my agent said, I'm going to put you on a lineup that's a little different from what you're used to doing in the clubs, you know, and the whole shit. You know, it's this EDM... DJs, I'm like, what does that mean? Electronic dance music. I'm cocky as a motherfucker. You know, I'm leaving the office, the whole shit. We drive to the to the to the thing for the sound check. It's your first time here at ADM. I'm looking at what I'm getting ready to play in front of. <laughs> Nervous as a motherfucker. I'm like, I ain't never did no shit like this outdoors. All right. Me and my little lonely turntables in this gigantic ass stage with nothing on it. I said to myself, I'm gonna have to do this a little. I'm gonna have to go seriously hip hop with this shit. One thing about the EDM DJs, they grab, they acquire those audiences very easily, but they ain't asked the, 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 the audience to do anything. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm going into laptop, E, hip hop parade. I'm gonna flip this motherfucker upside down. And yup, 
Mm. Apache, take me to the Mardi Gras. Mm. Burnt that bitch <laughs> down. Hell yeah. From that point on, I said to myself, this is what I want to do on this level. I got to insert hip hop in every anti hip hop mm. circuit possible so they know what we fucking DJs right. can do to see 90,000 people going like this. Yes. <sighs> Stupid. It's just that mind, energy must have been crazy. Mind boggling. And then I talked to some of these EDM fans. They says, we come from 90s hip hop. Yep. I'm like, what? He says, yeah. We come from 80s and 90s hip hop. But we just got introduced to this. This is where we are. So when I'm playing these joints, motherfuckers is reacting. E, I'm like... Let's go hard. Let's go Apache. Let's go this and that, that, that. Flip the whole room upside down. Wonderful look, man. Wonderful look. What's going on with this Scram? So, so good to see you, baby. Yo, likewise. Because when Scram play EDM, he takes ecstasy. That, you know? <laughs> I guess you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have that experience? You don't fuck with the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and when, you know what I'm saying? No, you're funny. I'm just asking, you know what I mean? That's what nah, I, 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 no, 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 I'm asking for a I'm straight sober when I play because I got, I'm got. i seeing things go reverse forward, reverse forward, four, six, six, four, four, six, the inversion. I got to be really sober when I do it. You know, but you know, you know, out of all of this, I love the idea of watching my mechanics and watching people like Scram play. Mm. Now, now, the name Flash, right? Was you a comic book guy? No, I got Flash. On Flash Gordon? No. I lived um, 927 Fox Street in the Bronx, and then down the block, one of my best friends was named Gordon. Now, what I did do is I ran fast. <laughs> I ran fast, so Gordon named me Flash. Ooh. And then three years later, I moved my, 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 my uh, set and I got down with a, a gentleman by the name of Mean Gene, and it was, on, it was on Boston Road, where I started doing my parties at a place called The Black Door, right? And I want to say 72, 73, 74, I can't remember exactly. One of the most notorious gangsters, like, when we did our parties, we knew wild motherfuckers was gonna try to fuck it up. So we had security. Some people were allowed to carry the guns, some weren't. Right. Joe Kidd was allowed to carry the gun. We knew he wasn't gonna pop off for nobody. He was kind of just watching my back. Him and the Casanovas, right? So. Casanovas. Well, Casanovas. Yeah. Plural. Just, they, they were security. They okay. were my security, you know, um, along with the Boston Row, right. you know, Boston Row crew. And it was New Year's. Seven, I want to say 73, let me say 74. Let me just say I'm bad with dates. After the party was over, he says, you handle those turntables like a grandmaster. Ooh. I'm like, what did you just say? Hmm. He says, you handle these turntables like a grandmaster. The next day, I went to every library possible trying to find out what that word meant. Karate, right? And, and then karate and the people that do the chess, the yeah, chess yeah. players. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bruce Lee was big with us back in the yeah. day. Oh, if yeah, we wasn't yeah. DJing and partying, we was going Kung to see Fu Bruce Flicks, Lee. Right. Bruce right. Lee was big, so. Right. I, and I can remember after Joe Kidd did that, I'm walking down the street, because I was just DJ Flash. Now I'm going, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash. And I got used to it. And then Ray Chandler put it on the flyers. Grandmaster Flash in the beatbox. You know, and then our crowd just got bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. And now, you and, you and um, Grandmaster Cass ever had anything because of the Grandmasters? I mean, Grandmaster Cass was called something else before. For that. You saying you're the original Grandmaster. Did you? Okay, Let's go out there and say that. Come on. Let's go out there and say that. <laughs> you know, um, but I, have, I mean, me and we love each other. Of course. We, of course, we, we, of course. We, we ain't beefing with each other. Of course. No, right. 
But so, how did you feel? Like, because you you had used the first grandmaster, then he he was going by a different name, then he came out with grandmaster. I mean, we we, <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 grew, we grew up together. All right. I didn't have, I didn't have no problem with it. You know, um, it's just that. I learned quickly because I was an idiot when I signed to Sugar Hill. When I got older, it was like, anything you do, copyright it, mm. trademark it. Because of what happened to him? Because of what happened to me in the record business. Oh. So I, you know, if you're going to use it, if you're going to use Grandmaster, I'm going to pop up first. Mm. So there, there are a few people that want to call themselves Grandmaster, but they're saying, Joseph Sadler is the owner of the title. Woo. Joseph Sadler is me, you know, but you learn. You learn when you get burned, you learn. Right. And it was a time when I was ignorant, I was right. dumb. So you, know, you, you get smart after a while and you, you figure shit out, you know what I mean? Right. How, how yeah. competitive were, were you guys, the, the different crews? Back then, you know something we didn't really battle with each other too much. You know, not in, you know hindsight is this: we were like four corporations. Breakout had the north. Cool Herc had the west. I had the east. Um, Bam had Bronx River. Whenever I wasn't playing, I go see Herc, or I'd go see Bam, or I'd go see Breakout. Um. Me and Breakout never played together. I think that Bam and Herc played together, but I never played with Herc. Me and Bam played together, but it wasn't, it, this thing didn't become a battle thing until the next tier came. Mm. Because now I'm, people is battling for their existence. Mm. The four of us was already kings in our the own right. We were established, so our, right. all the crews that became the understudies or became our prodigies, now they're battling for this. And that's when a lot of people were going in, into different territories. But with the first four, the problem why we, we didn't play with each other a whole lot is because the gang violence was nuts. Mm. You go into a wrong area, you might not make it out of there. So, and I'm talking about the black spades, the black pearls, savage skulls, seven this, immortal. This is pre Zulu Nation, because that's what right, Bam yeah. helped alleviate. Right. Now. Right. Now we're gonna go into Bam. Right. So Bam. Shopping for records. Having the most beats. Numero uno. Bam had more beats. If you played Apache, he had four different versions. Oh, shit. If you played the Bells, he had six different versions. He had records. Like, where did you get that from kind of records? You couldn't fuck with his collection. So let's not look past the situation that he's in right now. If I were to do a short blurb on Bam, King of the Beats, absolutely. And He's the one that calmed down this gang violence right. shit. And I think personally, in my opinion, if he didn't do that, there wouldn't have been too many block parties because them motherfuckers would have been up in there, shooting, stabbing, the whole shit. So a lot of them groups, he turned them around and then these groups became security for a lot of us. Like a lot of the black spades and the pearls became Casanovas. They were my crew that rode with me on security, right. mm. along with the Boston Road crew. So he, that that there, he did a, he did a big thing there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I miss him, but you know, considering on the situation that he's in, right. he was big on that. Uh, Herc, if I do a short blurb on him, he had a sound system that we all wanted. He could play some of these old, old, old house party records on his sound system, and that shit was absolutely um, amazing. His shit was incredible sounding. Um, his record collection was also pretty decent. Um, the technical aspect, me and him, we go back with that, back and forth with that. I say me, he say him. Wait, we we'll say that again, what part? The technical part, or who did what on the ones, and the whole shit, and how it works out. You know, his thing is called a merry-go-round, mine's is called a quick mix theory. 
you know, and I love I, I love the ground he walks on. You know, when he got sick, I was one of the first pe first people looking for him, and I went to Yankee Stadium, not to only see the acts, but to strictly to go yeah, see him that. in his dressing room. That was amazing. And see how he's doing. I'm saying, "What's up, old man?" He said, "Yo, I'm cool, old man." I says, "Man, lots of wars, lots that we went through." You know, he looks at me, I look at him. I said, I ain't fighting no fucking more. He said, I ain't fighting no more either, man. We too old for that shit. You know what I'm saying? But now, it's, it's the hurt. time. Yeah, yeah, because me and Heck, we and Herc, we, we battle about who did what and what did who. Right. You know, so me, I think these years now, this year especially, Nori, is show and tell. Mm -hmm. No more quiet, holding it, marking it, you know, and hiding what, what it is. It's time for Herc's crew to talk. It's time for Breakout's crew to talk. That's it's time for band, like it should be. And quite frankly, I would love it if all of us could sit down at one table. Mm. This will be We're gonna do the biggest, mm -hmm. this would be wow. the biggest story in hip hop ever. Just sit down, have dinner, and tell stories. How was it at your mom and dad's house? And how was it, and what got you into it? I'm telling my portion of it, but it's three more. Right. And I, that adds on to how this thing progressed. All right, so it's four of y'all that get together. And then y'all say, we want to add one MC. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Why you gotta fuck with me, Nori? Uh, no, 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 no. You gave me that. You, I you actually gave me that. That's the point. If I want to have one <coughs> MC, one rapper on in this, y'all fall in one rapper at any era in time. Any era in time. I'm getting the fuck up out of here. Any era in time. We're oh just, man, it's on you. Everyone say flash, and just you to pick the MC. Man, every MC want to be there too. One. One. I'm not, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was warned about your fight. <laughs> I was warned about you. When I first took on, when I took on this responsibility, come on, he said, Nori gonna ask the fucking tough yeah. ass fucking question. Yeah, yeah, One. One well, MC, join y'all at dinner and talk some shit. Let me ever, it's up to you. Not two, one. Just one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gave you two before. Yeah. If you were still here, I would say cowboy. Keep cowboy. Yeah. Let's make some noise for that. <laughs> Don't forget the fourth. To okay. give the blurb for the fourth. But, but you said, I got You said Bambada, you said Herc, yourself. Yeah. And, your... and, and Breakout. You yeah, right you, did you say the blurb for him, what you would say about him? Oh, Breakout. Because he's like, out of everyone that you name, he's like the least known of... of right, that's sure. Though. That's and why then, I want to highlight. Right. It. Breakout. First DJ to have a female MC. Ooh. Shah Rock. Shah Rock. Shah Rock. Big up to Shah Rock. Rock. We, we met and, at Monster. And Shah Rock, you know... Like now, I, 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 I felt so sorry for us because this is a male-dominated... That was it, the group of Not no four more. Plus one? Yeah, fucking four plus see, one. They, they, like, no, no, they, they pussy brown then. and they pull your whole brown right now. I'm talking about, 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 about back then. I don't know if you know. I'm talking about back then. Had pussy she had a fuck with all the girls. I don't right. know. They, they running shit right now. She had, you are so, absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm talking about, I'm going back. I'm going back to the beginning. I'm going back to the beginning. Like she was the only female MC that, and she had to contend with all of us. Right. You know, so DJ Breakout in the Funky 4 Plus 1. So Breakout has Shaw Rock. Has Shaw Rock. Wow. Sound system. It wasn't pretty like Herx, but that shit was loud like Herx. And if I could speak scientifically, his bass bottoms were reverse. The wolf was put in reverse and he drilled a hole in the back, they were ported, and he had them angled they were garbage cans, the big garbage can with his bass bottoms. So when he played the big beat, boom, 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 like the bass was like dumb. 
<laughs> it was incredible. He had an amazing sound system. It was called the Mighty Sasquatch. Oh, shit. Herc was called the Herculoids. Mine was called the Gladiator, but my shit was uh, kind of whack. Bams was just, I don't know what Bams was called, but I don't think Bam had a name, you know, but these are the things that I love talking about. All right. And we love hearing it. Now, White Lines, how much cocaine was in that studio session? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all made the song, no? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This guy. I, 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 let, let me be totally honest with you by that time. By the way, we was looking at the lyrics coming here. Y'all yeah, invented gangsta I, rap. I, 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 Y'all yeah, invented gangsta I rap. I, I don't write lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, so, um, um. Flash, it's trying to take us a lot. But it was Red Master Flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, like, we were probably the tightest unit in the streets. Mm -hmm. right. Me and the five. You know, mm -hmm. with Disco being Easy Mike. Um, then when we got into the record situation, and I realized that we were, were in, in a great situation, I was the first one to want to leave. Uh, but it didn't happen that way. So from the six of us, three went with me to Electra, and three... Pretty much stayed back. Mm. That record was on its way to being made. We left by then. Uh. Mm. So Mel and the rest of them made that record. So that's actually Melly Mel's record. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, whenever I'm at a like a like a like a white industry party and that record come on, yeah. I, know, I know the white people about to yeah, go yeah. crazy. <laughs> I know, I know they about to sniffle some shit. And it's a great song and Melly yeah. Mel's a great writer, but yeah. right. by that time we had split, you know. And um, you, yeah, that was his record. You found that sample, the cavern? Of course I did. Yeah, right. Right. so it's still right. your record too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because people credit that to the, f some say reality rap, right? Some people say that's the first Song that details reality rap, and then some people outright say that that is the first that the gangster message. A message. Oh, a message, message is what you're damn, thinking damn, about. Thinking. But I did yeah. both. No, no, because white but lines. But the message was first. Yeah, but they, that, that was broken glass everywhere. Yeah, These niggas talking about getting coked up. Yeah, that's the message. Oh. That's the message. I ain't gonna lie, man. That's the message. Come on, what the fuck? White lines, white lines. Come on, come on. White white line. Line. Come on. <laughs> and, and we thought they were subtle. Until this morning, we listened I mean, to the White Lines. The white and then with Diego, the Diego's, I'm like, damn, yeah. Diego, you know this record better than me. But I come to find out, Diego, he's 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 reading the words, and I'm like, damn, these words are pretty foul. Like, <laughs> Mel was a great writer. I mean, yeah. but by that time we split. By that time we split, and um, uh, they continued on, and we continued on with an electro, pretty like much. It. Sylvia Rome wasn't there yet. Uh. Sylvia Rome was there. Right. She's not, and she wasn't in the powerful position that she's in now, and she deserves every bit of what she did. Right. Because she was always the first one to say, let's work it out. Mm. She didn't, she, she didn't really, Sylvia wasn't really business, business talking, it was more like friendship. Mm. Like, what does you, what you want to do? How could we make it work? Could we tweak it a little bit? You know, she had like a heart. That's how I remember mm. Sylvia, Sylvia Rome. And how about the masters? Did you guys go back and get your masters? Like everyone? No. Whoa. So yes and no. Um, that got a little messy with the record label and the group. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, because, you know, because after a while we we broke up, we all went out in se separate ways. I went on and did what I had to do, and it, mm. but then we got back together to figure out how we could make this happen. Of course, new world now. Mm -hmm. Shit could be played on things like Spotify and right. all this. Right. All, and all, it's, it's a new all these new lanes and the whole shit. So we had to get together and figure out how we could. So we got a company who handles that. Right now, so we get royalties coming in. You know, I get a couple of checks right. now. Finally, right. so it's it's not bad. I do think um, if I had understood the business back then, right. things would have been fi financially much better now. Mm -hmm. But you live and you learn. You know, there's some things you know. A lot of things I'm perfect at is that type shit, contractual and legal and this and that. That that didn't have a clue about that. Mm -hmm. But 
Now our shit plays, we get paid. And, and Rick James was the first person to tell you, because there's like rumors like even of Prince like not wanting to, to, to deal with artists who didn't own, own their the masters. Or the oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He didn't want to deal with artists. Like not, not, not deal with it. Like he didn't want to, like, like um, Nas, it's a famous story. Like we asked Nas, like what is the person that turned you down? And Nas said, um, one time he asked Prince to get on the record and Prince just asked him, do you own your masters? And then Nas was like, no. And he was just like, yeah, well, get back to me when you own oh, so your masters. He probably, he, he probably he knew what the game was like. He knew the game. And he, this is back then. You got to yeah. remember. Prince been dead like yeah. 22 years. Like, yeah. right? I, I don't, I'm not yeah, sure. He, he said something like, I don't want to put the like the executives at the level. I don't want to put their kids through college. I'll put yours. That, that's, yeah. that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, like, think of how young Prince was. And think about how much he must have, like, Nas my brother. Think how much he must have fucked Nas up. But you don't, you don't, you don't expect that right. answer. Like, yo, yo, do, uh, nah. yo, yo, can you do a record with me? Yeah. Do you own your own masters? Ooh. Because. You know what I mean? Like that's that's, feel that's probably there. like the smartest yeah. answer you could probably mm, you know um, mm, answer with. Mm, yeah. Mm. So um, whoa, I didn't know that. About, I didn't know that about Prince. So, I didn't did know. you feel that about Rick James? Because like Rick telling you, like yo, schooling you about publishing, was that like like uh, that type of insensitive? I, I I knew I was in trouble after I talked to Rick business wise. I knew. Mm. Cocaine and all that. Rick still knew his shit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we was in deep shit. We you know, uh, learning the business. Because we learned the business too late. Right. Wow. We was really young. So, um, but I'll say this again. With the work that I put into this, mm -hmm. that's why I say, birthday, I don't give a fuck about it. My death day, what am I gonna leave behind for you younger people? Left behind hip hop. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Nah, because man, so, so I'm, I'm gonna just tell you, man, like, you are, like, I'm, I'm, gonna, read, I'm gonna read a message and I'm gonna, y'all tell me. Um, and I want to talk about some people, man. Okay. And you got to return whatever you, you set something up over there, too. Yeah, get me to yeah. do something. Get me to do the analog version. Yeah. This is someone, um, he says, Grandmaster Flash, to not hear his name mentioned in the Crazy Legs was disrespect. FYI, Kurt cannot DJ as we do today. He cannot blend records, Flash invented turntablism as we know it today. There's no debating this. Flash invented the slip mat. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, ready to show you about that. that. Yes, we are. Which required a slip mat and the art of juggling, a record to seamlessly extend a break which allowed a rapper to rap. Cowboy was the first one to do it. Herc and Bambada did it like Jamaicans. I don't know if that was a, I don't know if that was like a shot. You know, they, they, no, no. They were not Jamaicans. Yo, bro, hold on. Select it. Select it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, did it like Jamaicans oh. did. He but said, I was born in the Bronx, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Herc and Bambada did it like Jamaicans did. They just chucked records and breaks on without blended. Herc refused to learn how to juggle Flash style and has invented Flash to, advised Flash to this day. Flash can tell you the story himself. You need to interview him. He's the godfather of hip hop. Herc was the godfather of hip hop party. Bambada mm. had the streets. Ooh, big, big. Let's go. I got deep. I got deep. You got deep. I got deep. Yeah, I got, I got deep. deep. And who you said said this? I don't know. I'm gonna say. Dude, they, they took a shot. What? <laughs> Yo, what did you what do you, you think about that? Hold on. Whoa. Okay. I got deep. Let's go to the slip man. <laughs> Yo, um. Okay. Give me the give me the enemy. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the okay. enemy. That's the enemy. What's the, That's what, what comes with the turntables. Don't cut me off. I want you to cut me off. <laughs> so, when you first buy the turntable, it comes with this. And I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Mike, move in. I do not, to this day, 52 years later, I don't understand what the purpose of this survey. Because, like I told you earlier in the interview, the disco DJ had a long runway. Our runway was really short. Right. So, when I... Move the microphone closer to him, guys. So, when I put the record... I'm saying to myself, I gotta get to the beat quicker and connect the, the duplicate records quicker to make the seamless loop. 
when I put the needle down because this is the right way. But she's being sarcastic, guys, when he says this is the right way. Yeah, this is the right way to DJ because that's the way DJ did. That's the way they did. were doing it. That's the way they DJ. But right. when I started figuring out, when I, look at, when I looked at the record, I knew to myself, Flash, it is fucking impossible. Because you look at the record, this shit got 10 million grooves. How can I pick the arm up and hit that spot every time and keep it seamless and smooth? It's impossible. And that's when I started thinking to myself, I have to learn how to play the turntable the wrong way. I have to go outside of what the norm was according to the disco DJs and the non-disco DJs that were heavy on the tone arm. And my first move was to study the components. The cartridge. The cartridge comes in two classifications. Ceramic and magnetic. The ceramic cartridge came out in the 60s, the 70s, but it didn't translate well over records that had heavy bottom. So here comes the magnetic cartridge. Then I studied the needle. The needle was called the stylus. Stylus comes in two classifications. So there's, the, there's the elliptical. Now, if this is the groove, the elliptical needle sat in the groove halfway because when I tried to spin it back, it kept spinning out of the groove. The spherical, conical needle was shaped like a nail. So when that sat in the groove and I went back, it stayed in the groove. Although the elliptical needle sound better, the conical needle sound like shit, but it stayed inside of the groove. Needle figured out. Turntable. I went to the backyard, took as many turntables out of this brown box stereos that was in the backyard, magnet box. Fisher Price, Zenith. One day I was coming home from school. And there was a store in a Hunts Point part of the Bronx called Vicmar. There was this gray battleship, nasty looking table in the window. It had these things on it, looked like they had the mumps. Mm -hmm. I go inside this door and I say to the first salesperson, I'm doing a study on turntables. Is it possible, could you take that turntable out of the window because I'm doing a study? He says, I'll be right back. He comes right back with two football player dudes because he was under the impression that I was trying to steal or take the turntable. And I says, no, sir, I was not. I'm doing a study on turntables. And I just want you to just put it on the counter, plug it in, because I want to test something. And what I wanted to test is, when, when the platter is in a state of inertia, how long does it take to pick up the speed? Turntables back then took a whole turn, a half a turn, three quarters of a turn. This particular turntable picked up in a quarter of a turn which meant the torque, the muscle on that platter will be able to go clockwise while I went counterclockwise. Big problem was I didn't have the money, so I asked Vic at Vic Mall, which was the name of the store, how much were the turntables? He says they're $75 a piece. And I looked down at the, at the company. I never heard of it before. It was just little label called Techniques. Yeah. $35 a piece. I went and got me a messenger job. I worked at Crantex Fabrics, 1412 throwaway, and I was delivering swatches to different com company. And this swatches is like the, the material that designers use before they make the outfit. Uh, I also used to go to the supermarkets and any elderly person that needed help with their their, um, their bags, their groceries and stuff, I would help them to their house. So I had to make $150 to get these two turntables. And when I finally got them, 
and I got him home, there was this big nasty rubber thing on this. Now in my mind, I'm already saying to myself, I have to be able to go counterclockwise. And when you try to go counterclockwise with that, you will notice the whole plat is going counterclockwise. I'm like, no, this is not working. My mother was a seamstress. I watched her make our clothes. Polyester, rayon, silk, cotton, leather, suede, felt. Give me that case thing. Felt. I remember felt because in grade school, we used to cut out letters. And if you cut out letters looking really good, you get five stars, you bring it home. Mommy would like, love you, open that up. So, felt, it's limp, very limp. This became the enemy. Out of here. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> when mom wasn't looking, no, before mom, I ran to the material store because I used to watch mom make clothes. I'm going through the aisles. Polyester, rayon, cotton, silk, felt. I bought two pieces of felt that was the size of two albums. And it was very, very limp, the felt. So when mom wasn't looking, I did, I took this spray starch and I sprayed it on what I call the wafer. And I called it a wafer, ladies and gentlemen, it's because during Easter, mom used to get us sharp and take us to the neighborhood church. And I don't know if you guys know about this, but during Easter, they give you this little white wafer thing to eat. I called it a wafer. And when I ironed it, and I put it on the turntable, I called it a wafer. Give me the other ones today. But there was one component missing. Let me, let, me, let me get that part. When I put the wafer on top of the platter and I put the record on top of the wafer, there still was a degree of resistance because I could feel it. My sisters or my mom used to make these chocolate chip cookies on this type of paper. I cut out the circle amount of it and then I put, I put the wax paper on, this, on the platter and I put the wafer on the wax paper and I put the record on the wafer and now no resistance when I went counterclockwise. Problem solved. How long was that process? <laughs> Give me a second. Four blocks forward, six counterclockwise. This is where I got stuck, and this is where I almost walked away when I walked away for about two or three weeks. I got stuck. Why is it the vinyl going four bars, let's take good times, four bars. Mm, mm, mm. Four bars. So statistically, it takes the brain four bars to understand a new song. So for me, the problem for me was I had to play the songs the wrong way. Way. 
So what I did was, first things first, I put crayon on the mark because this break happens to be on the top. So now we're gonna do this with one record first. Four bars first. And we're gonna count four bars. One, two, three, and four, right? Now, four bars forward. Why is it if I bring it back four bars, why am I in the wrong place? Four bars just went by. It passed the line four, four times. And this is what stopped me. Yo, Scram. You went four bars forward. Why can't I go four bars mm. backwards? Don't one of y'all. Don't answer the question. Don't. No, DJ hey. motherfuckers. What? <laughs> Let's go. Show us the location. If it went four bars forward, it's like why can't I go four bars What's the name of the Why? RPM. Why? Stay what up, EFN? Stay out yeah, of it, Scram. Uh, <laughs> it's not really a clear answer. Scram, bro. don't answer that. <laughs> the bar got nothing to do with the speed. No, it doesn't. That's what the, to me, that's what I'm thinking. Like, the speed of when you bring it to the belt. not necessarily a bar. Stay right? out of it. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. I want to know why DJ got this right. Nobody. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I feel terrible. Terrible. <laughs> It's because the average, you were close, the average speed of an album that's 12 inch inside spins 33 and a third. Because a 45, that would be different. Mm, no, the 45 would be the same, the same, the same theory. So the, the, same third, theory? The, the third constitutes oh, for the two more uh, top of the break and I'm going to show you how it works. And this is the birth of the quick theory. And you said it took you three weeks to figure this out? Three, three weeks. I walked away. I was mad as a fuck. Four bars forward. Why can't I go four bars back and I'm in the wrong place? I got a question. So any any speed beat? Right. Uh, any speed beat? Four to six. six. Four to six. Four to six. Any beat. Any speed. 45, 33, 60. Yeah, she she could be a bike. Yeah. That could be whatever. <laughs> right. I'm going to show you. I remember. I remember. I remember. I don't care, but I'm kind of fearful. for it. Okay, I'm gonna show you right now. Let's do it. Let's go through it, man. Let's go through, let's go through it. Now. Yo, this is wild. Let's do it. Let's go. And I'm doing it real basic, no fancy shit. Same as loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. No, that's all. Let's do it with a rock record, but I call it hip hop. Fuck that shit. Let's go. We the white boy record now. We the white boy record right now. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, check. Throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. Let's use a jazz record. Let's use a jazz record. Let's use a jazz record. Let's go. So now, now there's some songs that are an exception to the rule where it's just two bars. And if it's two bars, now this becomes 2BF and this becomes 
three counterclockwise res um, revolutions, full loop extraction. So, at this, how I almost slipped on this record. When I heard this and I put, I put the needle down. It was long as fuck. I almost missed this bitch until I let it play for a little while. Woo! One, two, three, check, go. One, two, three, check, go. One, two, three, check, go. This is the quick mix theory. Uh, huh? That's because it was a faster BPM? No, it's because the drum beat was so short. But, uh, but it was yeah. double time. Okay. Double time. So if, because most of those were similar BPM, so my question is, would that apply for a 120 BPM, like a house record or something? Or that I'll try that. I never tried that. But it has to be four bars. Because four bars, the bars four, the BPM. Four, four bars, like this, this, this device right, is, this, this, this device is static. So four bars on a house record will still be six counterclockwise to get back to the beginning of that yeah. particular it should, section. It should. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if it's a house beat and it goes into something funky for four bars, you still will have to go six counterclockwise to get back with it because this is static. So this works with a pop record, a, a rock record, a jazz record, a blues record, and every genre of records in the world. So when I figured this out, Including this, this, yes, all of them. This is what made me. <laughs> This is what made me dangerous. This is what made me dangerous. And this is what made DJs had to go back and retool. Because they all, and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, this is what I call, let's use um, seven minutes of funk, let's use that. Have you on the tone arm. I don't give a fuck who you are. It is impossible to do what I just did by just doing the tone arm. Right. Now you have no control to the record. You're doing this. That's the, that's the Pete Rock calls his train record. A rapper cannot rap on this. A dancer, maybe they could dance all that. This, now you have no control. No control. Transition. The law. Come on, talk. Oh, no, no, don't talk, don't talk in private. That's it. I'm saying the science between the needle drop. Like, I've seen, like, what I've been scratching, like, bringing it back. Now, needle drops. Needle drops something else, but that, what's the science for that? This is, this is, this is DJing the right way. This is DJing the right way. You don't put your hands on a record too much, you don't, you know, and you put the needle it's down, the and you move it over, right? right. Scram, we break the law. We turn this into a Morse code. We break the law. We're touching our fingertips. We are making the record dirty. We're putting stress <laughs> on the platter. This is breaking the law. And it took me almost three years to break the law. And when I did this, when a rapper is in front of me, he's in good hands telling his story. And this is when the, the rappers who were, I mean the producers who were DJs, they knew how to take a seamless loop and put it into a machine and then produce the shit out of the fucking beat. So when people like Nori walk in and say it's raps and get out, he's in good hands. 
producer going to going to complete the mix. And you know how a recording console is like 52 faders. It's a lot of fucking work to put a record together. This is the type of shit that I'm talking about, Nori, that needs to be talked about. <laughs> Throw him in jail. He's been breaking the law for a long time. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, sir. What about 45? Yeah, yeah, it's harder. It's harder. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not material. It's not material. It's not fucking material. Quick time. You break for a minute? No, no, no. I was like, y'all finish y'all. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll wait for E to come back for that one. Um, uh, damn, uh, I ain't never heard nothing better. Okay. We didn't actually, we talked about Rick James, but right. we, didn't underst- we didn't talk about the meaning of that record. Which one? P I M P. The S I M P? Simp. Simp. Oh, that's a. Um, Mel did that record with him. I, I, I didn't even know about the record. Simp to Pimp, something like that? Yeah, Pimp yeah. to Simp. Pimp to Simp. Yeah, now, it so says here, their name on it. You know what it is? And this is the shit that got Sylvia so pissed off because... Um, Sylvia Rome. Sylvia Robinson. Sylvia Robinson. Because... Sugar Hill. Motown called Sugar Hill for Mel to guest star on a Rick James record. Ooh. So, but Rick James knew who I was. He knew the group. And he knew that Grandmaster Flash was the, 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 the trademark, was the mark that, that was going to sell the record. Wow. So when he didn't put Melly Mel, that made Sugar Hill Records very angry. But that was a Mel, and that was a deal long after I left. But they got your name on it. So right. Was, was my name, my name, my name was on a few things that okay. nothing happened. Let's okay. just put it that way. Okay, okay. But okay. if I had to do, all, to do over again, I'd do it the you know, exact same way, man, because I love what I do. All right. Yeah. And let's, let's talk about Get get Down. The, uh, was that on Netflix? Is that based on you? No. Here's, here's the thing about Boss Lerman. Boss Lerman would take this beer can and he would make this shit look like the most incredible shit ever. And this is why I love Boss Lerman so much because nobody else other than the people who made Wild Style gave a fuck about wanting to come into the Bronx Mm. and film it. Mm. So when I met him, he wanted me to just be, uh, to help him with uh, how the clothing was back then. And kind of like a, you know, a small role. Mm. But then what was happening was, um, as he was filming getting put it together, and he would ask me to come down to say, what do you think about this scene? I'll say that was the wrong area of the Bronx. It, like, he was spending, you know, a lot of money on the wrong area shooting. Mm. And so, then he asked me to be a producer mm. with him. And then he asked me to stay home for my tours. I said, well, if you can match the money that I make on my tours, then I'll stay home. And he did. Wow. So, from there, Good. then one day, you know, shooting, he says, man, I need to put you in this. I need to get find somebody to play you in this. I'm like, well, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm gonna get down. Yeah, to get down. Okay. You know, he tells me this. You know, I'm going to my area to work. He's going to his area to work. Like passing each other in the hallway. Like I'm like, yeah, whatever. About three weeks later, I come to work. He asked me to come in his office. Yo, E, and Nori, I, I, I walk in the office, and I'm like, who's your mother? Motherfucker look just like me. Oh, oh shoot. Who's your mother? Wait, tell me. Tell me. Hold on, hold on. Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, who's your mother? <laughs> yeah. Who's your, who's your mother? Let me, let me. How you walk in the office? Who's your mother? No, no. I walked no. in. I looked at him and I said, he could I was be my like, son. <laughs> what's your mother's name? Because he looked just like me. Oh, shit. And sometimes we do things, you know, uh, and we don't oh, know. Yeah. She you thought your mom was on a hunt? No, no. I thought that he was my son. Oh. And I didn't know. <laughs> So Boz, Boz got his, Boz, you know, he, he, he said that shit to me in passing in the hallway. So I didn't take that shit serious. Right. And then he says, yo, Flash, come in the office. Come in the office. I want you to meet somebody. I walk in there. He looks at me. 
I look at him. I asked him, what's his mother's name? I, I, I respectfully, because, I mean, I'll say, I had fun on the road and I did some things, you know. Let's just clarify for the people that is new listening to this. <laughs> he is saying he was the original sniper. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is the original. Oh my original God. Why are you going sniper? there? <laughs> he, invented, <laughs> he invented sniping? <laughs> he invented sniping. That's what he's saying. Yo, he said he, he invented the culture oh that he's been yeah. bringing yeah. up and taking shit down for so a year. I, so I asked him, okay. and, and, and then I found out, uh -huh. you know. Who was, you know, he told me, his, told me his background, his family background. I was like, okay, let's go to work. Let me teach you. So right. I taught him somewhat of the basics. I didn't, I didn't want to play the role. He needed somebody younger to play a young Flash. So he had to scour the world and find somebody. And he, find, he found this dude that, shit. I'm like, that made me think on planet Earth, we all have a duplicate. Yeah, the doppelganger. So, what do they call it? Is that what they call it? Yeah, that's what that's legitimate. What they call it? A doppelganger. Everybody has an exact twin doppelganger, somewhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah doppelganger. Not double. Oh shit! Doppel. I seen Kevin huh? Hart. Doppel, yeah. right? Like not double. Oh, that's oh, big. Double, he double. Just, he just picked somebody up. Word. I found my twin. That shit threw me for a loop. Yeah, yeah. Good kid, man. Good kid. Yeah. Took me about a month to teach him how to just do the basics, you know, so that he could perform on a get down. So let me tell you something, Nori. That was not a realization of. The hood in the Bronx, but that wasn't the intention. Right, right, right. The intention was to take elements um, and, and then glorify it with his story. And the one good thing about that, that shit gave attention to the Bronx. Right. It gave it, it, even motherfuckers are saying that fucking shit was whack. It wasn't real. It wasn't whatever. Wow. Gave attention to the Bronx. Oh, yeah. Was you an executive producer on that series? I was a producer. I was a producer. Curtis Blow was a producer. It was a wow. few of us that was producers. Um, um, it was a great experience to be able to just see how a, a soundtrack is written and, and, and see the motherfuckers with the, the strings and the whole shit and to see how a movie is made. Like to be in the back room and see how it's constructed. It's fucking amazing. It wasn't filmed in the Bronx? It was filmed in the Bronx. And it was filmed, and then um, Boz rented an area in Queens, and this must have been the size of 10 fucking Walmarts, and they replicated a bedroom in the 70s. They replicated, uh, and this is where he asked me to go to the clothing department and make sure that Silver the right Cup clothing Studio? of the time. You know what I'm saying? Silver Cup Studios in Queens? Uh, was it? I believe, uh, I don't Island know. City? As soon as you get yeah, off the bridge, yeah, this shit was yeah, like this shit was like a whole city block, Nori. Yeah, 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 yeah. And each room had a replication of like the kitchen, uh, a bedroom, you know, clothing, and the whole shit. And he asked me to just kind of oversee a lot of this, and then from there he did this glorifying thing that he does. Uh -huh. But it, it wasn't real, but he damn sure put Bronx on a map on it with that shit there for real. Now, right, on, thank him for that. Now on that soundtrack, you got Teddy Pendergraft on that soundtrack. Yeah. Did you work with Teddy Pinnega? No, I actually did the remix on it. Oh, that's the remix. So what happened was they needed certain records in the show with less talking. So he, uh, I guess he cut a deal with Sony, and Sony allowed me to go into the vault mm. and see the masters. Mm -hmm. And I was able to take masters... Like, I wish I could go back in there now. Like, you know, you and I, we we yeah. we look for that shit forever and ever. But imagine going in there and seeing motherfuckers with really white coats on. You got to put gloves on. Yeah. Because these masters are so old that they can break. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm looking at, like, Miles Davis. I'm looking at, like, fucking Cheryl Lynn. I'm looking at, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm looking at the master that made these songs that I cut up and, and, and do what I do. Right. I'm looking at the fucking original master. And it was... Tons of them, and they just said, "Go around and just pick what you wanted." Wow! And they're gonna let you open it up and, and, and no, they just said, "Pick what you want," and then they bake, and they bake the copy. Oh, you can't and do they, the they, stems. You can't say I need a baseline from yeah, yeah. this. No, 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 no. They, 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 they gave you a bake. <laughs> for a lot. <laughs> and then they oh, well, took to the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, were, sure. they, yeah. they let me do it, and they took the stems back because yeah, of course they don't want us. They don't want us to have that. That's shit. a That's a museum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that's that, that's pretty much that, man. You ever met Pr Prince or Michael? I met Prince when I was when I did the uh, Chris Rock show. I was his music director, mm. and to sit down with him and just 
talk to him about life, very low speaking, very calm, very intelligent. That shit blew my motherfucking mind, man, to see that shit, man. Prince. Yes, Prince. And I never, got, I never got, yeah, because he's, he's really, he's a little, he's a little guy. He's, 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 he's a little guy. You know, so. He was wearing heels, though, man. Those platforms. I mean, fuck, man. Oh, whatever it was, he was a great fucking artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was the shit like, back in the so doing that, doing that, you know, I got a chance to meet, you know, that's probably when I first, the first chance I got to sit and talk with Jay-Z, because he, he came on the show. Wow. You know, so um, I, it, it was quite a moving experience to learn TV. So I've been behind movies and I've been behind TV shows. And I, I, I remember when the Chris Rock show was on, the shit was supposed to be just a pilot. Mm. But the shit went five years. Wow. And then on year five, we both said, let's, let's. Let's jump off while the shit is still hot because sometimes you could do a sequel, a sequel, a sequel, a sequel, and it should just get whack right. after a while. So we jumped off when the shit was hot. It's pretty cool. Let's talk about Beat Street. The Beat Street, that wasn't me, that was Mel. 12 inch single vinyl? Ver Mel. Version? Get the fuck out of here. No. Damn, yo, you got your name on everything. Yeah. I ain't gonna nah. lie, your yeah. name is all uh, over. Nori, yeah. the business did what the business did. I'm much smarter now. Right. I'm much more than now. So, all right, let me. Let's, Are for you people who's tuning in, right? When you Google this, when you Google this, actually comes up, what? Like, right? All of these these records with your name attached. You're saying to, for people who don't know that most of this, this was the record label because your name was hotter at the time, or was that name Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five hot, together simultaneously? It's no, like Wu it Tang Clan. No, okay, it's like this here. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five is six people. All right. Grandmaster Flash was hot from the streets, All right. made hot by the record label. And there was a time when I had to go in to court to fight for my name because it was getting a little bit out of hand. Wow. I think at that particular time, I lost everything. But when the day came when the judge says that this marriage has to be ended and Joseph Sadler is awarded his name, this is the courts downtown with the white steps. Who, who was fighting for your name? The label? The label was trying to keep it. Right. So when the judge Damn. awarded me- and What label is this? Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill, Sugar yeah. Hill. So when, 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 when the judge awarded me my name, I ran out the- I, the judge said it in judge terms, and my lawyer's looking at me like, what, what's the matter with you? You just got your name back. I ran out of that courtroom, and the way the courtrooms are is like the white steps. Mm -hmm. I fell down on my knees, and I thank God, and I was crying like a baby, mm. because all I wanted was my name back. Right. Whatever you took from me financially, okay, fine. Please yeah, take that, because I think at that particular time, I had done enough imprint in the business and our little business of hip hop that the world would take me in. And they did. So that's when I started all over again. I started in clubs and I started playing alone. And I took the theory to the next level. And 18 years later, here we are. So it was rough. But you know, there's faith and there's belief. And I'm very spiritual. Wow. I'm big on God. Man. You know, right. and a lot of things right. that I do. Now, what was your name before? Uh, DJ know, Flash. No, before DJ Flash. Because I know you said you, you, your boy named you that because um, you was fast at running. I ran fast. So what was, did you have a name before that? No. 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 Mine was MC Yahoo with the bald bean. I had a fucked up name. You ain't have a fucked up <laughs> name? You just always had a fly flash yeah. name? You just always had a fly Repeat that name. shit again? Mine was the name MC Yahoo with the bald bean. The yeah. bald you didn't come out with a record with that oh. name. No, I did not. No. You know you need to. Oh, so no. why didn't you? Oh, you need oh, to. Oh, God. That's your street Whoa. mixtape. Oh, shit, that's big. That's what so you, you big. always came out with flash. You always had a fly. Yeah, flash, yeah. Okay, okay. That grandmaster was put in front of it, you know, but other than that, no, I wasn't I wasn't nothing else. Right. So, so, um, we got a quick time? Y'all did a quick yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, they can do a quick time, but Scram's gonna be the designated drinker because you're not yeah, drinking, right? I'm not drinking, I'm not drinking. No! Oh! You're the 
designated. You the designated junior. Come on, Scram. He put the door. He said, "I'm fasting." No, no, no. Yeah, Scram gonna take shots, man. Yeah, come on. He gotta do it in the name of motherfucker Grandmaster Flash. I got three questions for Flash. Okay, yes. At the quick time. At the quick time. Yeah, at the quick time. Yeah, at the quick time. Okay, start with quick time. He wants you to drink. That means you have to answer everything. Because if you don't answer it, I gotta take a shot. Oh, you gotta explain them the rules. Oh shit! Explain the rules. Explain them. He's gonna ask you one one thing or the other. Some some controversial. A question is that's one thing or the other. No, you're making it more complicated, bro. Yeah. It's just it's just we're gonna give you two two names two things. You pick one, nobody drinks. If you say both or neither of them, then we all drink it. You're not drinking. Two rappers, two. You'll see. It's so easy. But, but just answer everything. Multiple choice. Get two, pick one, nobody drinks. You say both or neither, we drink it. We right. drinking with you. You'll see. Well, right, we you drinking ready? with. You ready? ready? Here's Cram. Let me give Cram his, uh, his shot off. glass. Come on, can you, can, can you just be easy, man? Can you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, no, yeah, yeah. These guys <laughs> write it. It's huh? not me. Okay. Y'all ready? Uh, Come ask on. Her, you gotta ask her for you it. You guys been having side Jamie, side Jamie, class. Jamie, get tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What you tequila. drinking? What you drinking over there? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like, the fuck, bro? I'm not. You ain't drinking? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. You said you ain't drinking, so I'm with you. I want to stay with you. I'm not. I can't drink. Come on. I drink. No way. Sorry. All right. Melly Mel or or Keith Cowboy? Oh, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Load up the scram drink. And this is this is actually a positive thing. We trying to bring. We want to yeah, talk about yeah. these people in a positive way. You can pick them. It's not that you're dissing one or the other. Yeah. We are scram drink. <laughs> Melly Mel or Keith Cowboy? Yeah. <sighs> Melly Mel. Okay. You got it? Yep. Cool Herc or Bambada? Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Just either or. Either or. Either or. But you could say both or neither. Both. If you say both, scram drinks. Where's, um, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Drinks. I'm sorry. Get, 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 oh, so, oh, I get it now. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, look, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's like, it's like, it's we, like we, ain't go, we ain't going crazy. I'm, 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 I got one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get, let me get no, to it. I'm adding, I'm adding. Oh, adding? Okay, yeah, yeah. cool, cool. The B Boys or the MCs? Oh man, Scram, I really love you, man. You can't lead the witness, man. You gotta let him just. <laughs> Both. Go, ahead. Go, Scram. Go, Scram. Two more, Jamie. I'm sorry, Scram. I'm sorry, right. man. Houdini or Run DMC? <laughs> Y'all set me up. Bro. Ah! Oh my God, man. Sorry, shit. Uh, no, but these guys come up and this guy doesn't even uh, speak English. Run, DM Run DMC. Run DMC, that's cool. All right. You got it? The Beastie Boys or Fat Boys? No. Oh. The Beastie Boys. Red Alert or DJ Breakout? Oh, shit. I'm sorry, man. Both. Go ahead, Scram. <laughs> Scram Jiggity. Dale que tu puedes, bro. I don't got no line. I don't got no chaser. Yeah. It's drink champs. It's not yeah. nice champs. Damn. <laughs> Biggie. You want flash, some water man. to go with this? Biggie or Big Al? Oh. What is this, water? Yeah, it's water. So if you want to chase it, that was some water. Well, you said Biggie or what? Or Biggie or Big Al. Big Al. Curtis Blow or Slick Rick? Both. Go ahead, Scram Jiggity. You supposed to be doing. Let me ask you. Yeah, what? eventually. I'm, I'm drinking the alcohol. Oh, yeah, so. look, you the guest. You the guest. We got a cater. Go ahead. I'm a guest. And I'm a, I'm a, look, I'm doing, I'll, guest do, I'll do shots with you. I'll yeah, do yeah, shots that's right. That's right. I'm not gonna right. do them all, yeah, but I'm, come on, get that top. You need to alcohol. relax. You need to relax. Get that top alcohol going. Let's oh, go. This is two minutes. Oh my God. Only because this is an honor to be Ooh, drinking. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Crush Thank Groove you. or B Street? Crush Groove. Damn. Ooh, the next one. I know we drink it. I thought you would have went B Street. Mm -mm. Let's see. Let's see. Primo or Pete Rock? Both. 
All right, but don't lead the witness. Don't throw no. out things out there, man. Okay. I, I, I'm go, I, I was gonna go both. I knew you was gonna say both. Yeah, both. Oh, I'm skipping in between. George Clinton or Rick James? Bitch! I don't Woo! know why. You gotta, say, you gotta say. You gotta say that. You gotta say that part. You gotta say that. Both. Both again. Sorry. I'm sorry, man. I owe you one. I'm sorry. Damn, Curtis Mayfield I'm kinda with or you. I'm James kinda with you. Brown. Oh my God! Just pick pick a better one, a better set. Yeah, you gotta say both. I have to say both. You have to say both. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, look, look, I'm with you. I'm like seven shots. That's okay. It's tiny shot. And you're spinning tonight, right? Yeah. Woo. Yeah, spinning little. I gotta tell you, man. <laughs> I'm high as fuck. I ain't fucking no motherfucking weed. And yes, I'm fucked up right now. This is a drink champs favorite. Oh my God. And we see other shows mm. taking every, every, every this question. We don't oh mind. Oh my show God. Quick time. Just show us love. Yeah, a lot of shows. Y'all doing a lot quick of shows. time, man. But, uh, yeah, but we, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. But it's all love. Our, our, our favorite fan goodies. Um, DMX or Tupac? <laughs> Great question. Thanks a lot. God, I don't even want these. Both. <laughs> Yeah, okay. come on. Yeah. I'm hey, sorry. Man. Hey, man, go ahead. I'm sorry. He wants yeah. you to have fun. I'm a DJ too tonight. Yeah, but I thought it was like Don't worry mutual. about it. I thought it was a mutual thing. I didn't learn some I'm, shit. I'm here with you, I got the beatbox and everything. Shots by such bad luck. No, it's not. It's the two-four ratio. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. I'm drinking with you. Hold on. Ooh. Okay. Biz Markey or ODB? <laughs> Tepasato, where you at? Oh. Bismarck. <laughs> Next one's good. <clears throat> Analog or digital? Why you gotta go in my world, man? What's up? Why, 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 I'm an analog. Oh, no, no, no need to witness. My bad. My bad, Judge. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, I did it a couple times already. <laughs> I'm analog for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're taking a shot. No. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Scram Jones or Scram Jones? <laughs> <laughs> All three Scram Jones. Take a drink, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink with you, Scram. I'll drink, I'll drink with you. I'll drink you too. Shout out to Scram Jones. <laughs> Take a shot for yourself. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Look at this. LL Cool J or Big Daddy Kane? Now, this is offensive because I'm thinking they're saying light skin against brown skin. I'm thinking that's what they're going with. They both, they both lick their lips a lot. Hey, yo. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. Let's go. Let's go. Damn, this is this is, this is lethal. This is lethal. What do you need? Grandmaster Cash Sweet. or Cool Mo D? <laughs> cool Mo D. Sounds like y'all still got a little smoke. No, I love him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, shit. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Give me some sweet boys. You got it? Molly Ma. I just got it. You, you, you put your head back. What's, what's Molly Ma or Diamond D? Mm. Oh, shit. Both. Sorry. Both. Both of them are incredible. Damn. Buck Wild or DR period? Buck Wild. <clears throat> DJ Clue. Or Funk Master Flex? <laughs> you getting political now. I can get the car now. Right. <laughs> say it again? <laughs> it's like a check, check. You can also say neither. That's also. Or you can say you can both. Say ne or both, or you can say none. Clue or Flex? <laughs> DJ Clue or Funk Master Flex? He's like the last of the masters, right? Funk Master? Both. Both. Okay. Did I get the word? Did I say that? Did I get the word? This is a shot. Hey, man. No, I'm drinking out of my cup now. I'm, I'm switching in. I'm just, I, look, I'm just what doing your favor. What time is it now? I feel like I'm <laughs> a legend. Like, okay, this is a good one. one. You can't do a good one. Right this is a good one. It's fucking crazy. Rock him or KRS one? Oh, boy. <laughs> Both. Both. That's <laughs> it. 
Scrams. Scrams. Marvin Gaye Scrams or Smokey be... Robinson? Scram. Oh, Marvin. Marvin. Ooh, I smell that shit too. Wow. Ooh, it's disgusting. Oh my God. I feel, I feel for you, dog. I feel for you. Kanye West or Pharrell Williams? Both. Yeah. Chill out, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm going right. okay, to hold you up, man, as soon as you know. So we done here. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, man. Go ahead. It's like a pledge thing. You gonna, yeah. He's gonna throw him. Down. Michael Jackson or Prince? Both. Damn. Double fisted, brother. He wants you to go like this. Where's your shot? Don't, don't, don't worry, man. I'm, I'm respecting. I'm a flash. He, he two sober, two, two not sober. No, no, that's not the way this works. Come on, you gonna follow the rules. Come on, follow the he's rules. He's saying he's Grandmaster Nori right now. <laughs> Yo, MTV raps or video music box? Don't bring me no more. I'm getting a music box. Rest. Ralph McDaniels, we love you wherever you're at. Yep. We need you on here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love you. Not. It's a good question. Stevie Wonder or Way Charles? Scram. Scram, bro. Scram. Yeah, Scram. Scram at the whole man. Right. Both. Right. Both? Yeah. Yo! I can see that coming. Oh, you can see that. Yeah. Clever. Yeah. He said, you, you in the DJ podcast. Killed that. What about you? Killed you that. Shot with me, Fred? Oh, God, I can't do that, man. I'll sleep for a week. All right, you ready? I'm, 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 I'm. Lionel. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You, you ready? Sorry, you got to take a shot. Take it. You got a lot of shots you ain't taking. Nah, bro, look at this. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but it's look okay. at that. We have 25. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, you right now. Come on. At least, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm on to the next one. You got to take at least two of those. Come on, bro. You're embarrassing us. Jamie's sitting here over here. You're not even. Come on. Jamie's like. She, she's like this. She's like this is the worst shot guest ever. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 We have to pay for every yes. shot forward. But where's my toast? You, we brought you the heat, man. You uh, take the shots. What do you say? Take the shots. Flash, do you want him to take the shots? Keep it real. Don't put me on. Don't put me on. Yeah, like that, man. Flash, do you want him to take the shots? And I'm not the DJ. Do you want him to take the shots? Flash, go ahead. It's okay. You came here to have fun. Oh, oh, take a shot for me, please. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you, you ready? He's about to kill him. He's he's yeah. His liver is suffering so we can be here today. <laughs> 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 okay. Tequila, what are you doing? Lionel Who Richie? Tequila? Not me, bro. I ain't serving that? your drink. Hold on, hold on. Lionel Richie or Teddy Pettigrew? Mm. Some horrible ass shit. That's a... They both was dope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this segment is over, bro. <laughs> no, it's not. We, we, we're almost over. Only um, 30 more. I'm going to say Teddy. Teddy? Yeah. Okay. Gangstar or EPMD? Oh. Oh. Both. <laughs> Come on, Scram Chickity. We're not going to give you new shots. At least take, take Yo, care of your out. five All older right, children. You're speeding, though. You're speeding. Mm -hmm. You're speeding. All right. Chill out. I mean, just chill out. You're never going to be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> I called you personally. Yo, can you come out here? I'm sure. I thought you were gonna be a good, you know. Come on, come on. They're good people. They're good people. They're good people. They're good people. I ain't gonna let you shit on Frontier Airlines. They're good people. He owns stocks. Go ahead, man. You all just taking a goddamn cherry. Come on, just take a shot. Yo, it's just, it's just stank you over here. Casamigos, my foot. Go ahead. All right. Oh man. Tribe Core Quest or De La Soul? Oh. Damn, man. Wow. You know, it's Scram. Oh, man, the segment's yeah. over, bro. No, no, it's Two not. More. Come on, Scram. We talking here. Both. Both? Yeah, man. Okay. N.W.A. or Wu-Tang Clan? Oh, my goodness. Both. I, I, I was going to let you do the ice cube. No, no, there's... Uh, Somebody got to square off me. The, the, the executioners or the scratch pickles? <sighs> Both. That's Ooh. three. Yeah that's, yeah, that's three you owe, Scram. Come on. Relax. Ice Cube or Scarface? Damn. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. I think I need to use some more shots for Scram. Damn. Both. Both. He's yeah, got both. enough for the for the three years. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. Just cleared my liver. Three and then, then you got this. this, this. You're I'm almost, so you're almost, out, so you're almost surviving. Man, yes, you got to take those three though. Come on. Eight so, day so. water fast and I'm drinking. Oh now, my god. Now welcome to tequila. Welcome to, welcome to uh, Drink Champs Christmas party, guys. Hey, 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 hey. We want you nice and drunk. Listen, like I'm losing the last one. Let me get back to the interview. Loyalty or respect? 
Mm. Say both so he could just. It's both, man. Yeah. You gotta take all, all of those shots. Come on. Look, I'm gonna take a shot with you, though. Oh, thanks for taking one now, shot. One shot? I took a couple. What are you talking now, about? Now, now, Flash, we ask this to almost yeah. every guest, and it's almost like a cliche type of question, but it really isn't. Not especially with asking it to you. Give me water, I'm mad at you. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, no side conversations. You heard them. We're in the resource room. Let's stay in there. That's funny. That shit stinks. Did you ever think that hip hop would make it this far? Back then? Like, you got to see it from the. Mm. No. No. I think. Especially during that era, Excuse disco me. was very neat. White people always burping. Um, <laughs> disco was very neat and. Like they had, was, they had it together. Yeah, it was very neat. And, 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 and hip hop, even to this day, is tattered. Right. You know, we we swag a little different. We wear our clothes a little different. Right. We we dress a little different. We wear our hair like this, this, or like this. Like we do things. We break Many the flavors law. of hip hop. Yeah, we, we break the laws too much. I didn't think that a major corporation, mm. a major situation would say, oh, we're going to take these guys. Who wear their hats backwards, who don't dress like the average party goer, and we're gonna invest money in them. Never my wildest dreams, but you know, someone, wherever I am, whether I'm in Australia or Japan or England or London or California or right here, I thank God that I see this. Like, this whole shit that I did put a mist. Right. But what happened was, people said, what is that? So just that little bit of daylight of what is that was the saving grace for me, for hip hop. This is when all the producers were coming in town. Like, what is this thing these kids is doing? Mm. What is that? It could have been ill. And ill, I don't think none of us would be here. We right. would Absolutely. probably be doing some other shit. Right. I know I'll be doing something different. I would have hated it, but I would have been doing something different. I yeah, wore a lot of spikes back then. I didn't, but yeah, the crew did. Yeah, no, I didn't win no spikes. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> like, I you, know, spikes, right? <laughs> you know, we wore we wore a lot of leather. <laughs> let, let, we know we've heard different <laughs> stories why, but what's your take on why that was the? I think we wanted to be the ruling we, trend. We we, we 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 idolized rock and rollers, rock and rollers, Parliament and and, 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 and Parliament funkadelic like. They dressed one way when they went in the streets, and they dressed that way when they were on, on stage. stage. So we were like, Rockstar. "Let's let's not go buy leather. Let's hire somebody and fly him around the country with us to make our shit." Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. So we had a leather name was Mickey. Yeah, hey, y'all had stylists from wow. back then. Yeah. So we like we if we wanted like turquoise and black, you know, this way that way, he he would fly home. And then a week later, he would come with six suits. Boom. Is he, he was French? Both, huh? Is he's he black? He's black? Yeah, black. Black French? He sound like he, <laughs> sound like he got some type of French in him somewhere. He had another, yeah, he had another, oh, no, another he shop. Like, yeah. He had another shop in Soho. Okay. We told him, close that shit down. We're going to pay you. <laughs> wow. And he took care of us. <clears throat> wow. God damn it, man. God, take a shot for that, man. Take a shot for that. Take a shot for that. Take a shot. 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 You were drink champ. Listen, this is boss side right here. Um, do you like going in the studio making records, or do you like performing records? What is? What is? What is? What is? I like doing both. Okay. I like doing both because producer records is technical, and that's where I come from. That's a scientist in me. But then the performance side of me is the other side. All right. Playing. So right. I would say both, Nori. Okay. I say both. Let, let me ask you, because like the way you broke this down, this was very scientific. This was very biology. Like this was like this was like uh, a science project. Right? <laughs> How you broke it down. But then I got a lot of friend DJs that's dumb. How do they get over DJing? 
because they're not smart. He did all the hard work for right. everybody. Oh, you. Oh, no, literally. Oh, yeah. I didn't know all this shit. Nah. And somehow it transcended to me as a DJ. Like, we, right. he did all the hard work and it just, all that information came to us. Oh, so this is top tier of learning how to no, DJ. No, Y'all Thomas don't all got to go to this, this yeah. class. Yeah. yeah. You, you know how we all just screw in the ball? All right. But we didn't fucking do all the shit for the lights to turn on. Thomas. Oh. Right? We, the, the DJs afterwards, don't get me wrong. There's DJs that are really technical, really amazing, but for the most part, he did the hard part. He created the ball. We just screwed it in. Mm. That's probably a, a, a good way to yeah. put it. Okay, know. okay. so basically, you ever walked into a party and a DJ is DJing off his iPod? Or his... I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard about it. I haven't seen that yet. What would you do? <laughs> if you walked in a party right now, you, would you say, damn, it's come a long way, or would you be like, and DJ Mr. Kid, Lee this, right this, from, the Dominic, <laughs> from the Dominican Republic was back there yeah. jamming to his phone. <laughs> what, what the, yeah, Mr. Lee is sweating in the okay, mirror. Wait a minute. Is it that's a DJ Mr. Lee right so, there, the Dominican guy. So wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. So, so that's that DJ be, Mr. Lee. So let me ask the question: Would it be uh, like a party with people dancing and yeah, stuff? Dancing. And he's they DJing. Yeah, he's but he's DJing. looking in the mirror though when he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, because you, I can imagine you doing that. <laughs> you know, too. I, you know, I, yeah. say, I say to myself, "What would you?" Yeah. I'm a scientist, right? And I'm always wanting to to see people push the envelope. Um, to see somebody DJ off their iPod. What is? Is it two iPods or one? Would it be? It's an iPhone now. There's it's, no more yeah, iPods. It's, it's, it's his phone. He got no. Yeah. He got no. DJ off his phone. Yeah. So he's getting. So he's just pretty much just Playlist. playing. He's playlisting. Yeah. No, they actually have turn, little turntable apps in the phone, and some people are actually. I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Show him this despicable shit. You've never heard, seen it? Yeah, show him I've it. I've heard about it. Never seen someone. Yeah, no. Nah. I've seen you in there, your phone sometimes. <laughs> I just play I just play it's crap. I, I no. think anybody just playing a playlist off their phone saying they're a DJs, that's the most disrespectful shit in the world. Yeah, At I, least yeah. have the app that you're doing like a chicken chicken and then fucking go. <laughs> I think I've seen Shaq get busy on his phone one time. You I bet you no. I bet you he has. He's a DJ, bro. He, no, he's a yeah. DJ. Bro. He has. I bet you he has the app. Yeah. Was it Shaq? My bad. Who else? Who else uh, that's big in sports? Um, play for the Lakers. Point guard. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Play for the Lakers. He's a DJ? Early, early Lakers, when the Lakers was killing it. Um, Magic Johnson was a DJ. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah, he played college. He's been the owner for 25 years. Yep. Think said play for the Lakers. Magic Think Johnson was a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> he said, baby, he wants us right now. Remember yeah. this guy. Right no, the Magic was a DJ? I didn't know that. I thought you was talking about um, Russell Westbrook. Um, a what? Russell Westbrook. I thought he said a wrestler. You know what song I want to show love to? It's the break dancers. Who? Like, I seen them. I see these. You ever see these motherfuckers do that crazy shit? Crazy leg? Like, crazy legs and. And, 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 and the shout that's going into the Olympics? You know, yeah. It's. Incredible. Yeah. Like the way they contort their body yeah. and do that shit they do. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Doing it on Who concrete. Works, early breakers, my early breakers, Bam's early breakers, and then the second tier that came along, the breakers, you know, uh can, it's absolutely one. Can we actually go go back to, to the convo of how that's when you that's the beginning of you wanting to continue those breaks was for the breakers. For the breakers, the breakers were the stars. The, the rappers hadn't arrived yet. Right. Mm. They hadn't arrived yet. You know, it's, and the, and sorry to cut you, but the audience came to hear you and yeah. see them. Right. Mm. Right. Or you could see a break dancer with a boombox on any corner, right. street corner, doing a shit. Mm. With, with the cardboard. With the cardboard, exactly. Can I look yeah. at the back of your shirt real quick, please? I want to make dope sure shirt, we, by the we, way. Get this, we get this established. And we, we laced you with some Drink Champs gear right yes, there. Just yes. I got you. Yes. Can you read that for me, Scram? What, yeah. <laughs> we Scram after he drank. <laughs> First DJ to make the turntable an instrument. That make some noise that. First DJ to have a rapper. Let's make some noise for that. First DJ to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's make some noise for that. First DJ to be on Sirius X. Oh shit! First DJ to get a Grammy. Make some noise for that. First DJ to get a Polar Prize. Yes. Can you read the fine print at the bottom? Thank you. Not anymore. You do it? Yeah. I think we got. You. 
Yeah, 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 you took a lot of them shots, man. You good? He took it, he, he took it for the culture. He took it for the culture. Uh, what, what, what do you do with your Grammy right now? Like, do you sip out of it? Ooh. What do you um, actually, it's, um, I do a show on Twitch every Tuesday, um, noon, high noon experience, and then Thursdays, 8 p.m. Uh, my Grammy's in my, t- my studio. Okay. Where I... Where I do my show. The Twitch right. show. Yeah. You know, I get, like one is on one podium, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame one is on the left podium, the Grammys on the right. I like the flow. And then, and then you know, all the other awards that. are kind of, you know, uh, spread around, you know. It's all good. Because KRS said that he boycotted, not boycotted, but he didn't want to participate in the Grammys he ceremony because he felt like fully. 50 years of hip-hop. He's like, yo, that could have started at 47 and gave us a warning. You know what I mean? And he's like, you guys just want to you want to ignore us for 50 years. No, but he said that he he didn't feel that hip-hop was fully represented in that. Yeah. Like the yeah. B-boys, the, the, yeah. the B-girls, the... the yeah, no, 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 I, I, I mean, I would agree. <laughs> that needs to be seen on a major network. The four elements. Nobody has done that yet, so I do respect KRS, KRS1. It's now, four? Four elements is to break four, up. Yeah, the, and then the fifth is graffiti artist. Always debatable. Rapper and the graffiti. Yeah, it's yeah, four, four elements. And then knowledge of self and beatboxing are always like oh. beatboxing. I don't know what that is because the beatbox is right there. You know. <laughs> well, there you so when you think about beatboxing, that falls under the rap because right. it's speaking, you know, musically. Holy moly, guacamole! Do you, do you feel that everything for fifty for yeah for fifty years of hip hop? Whether it was authentic or not, was it positive? Because you know, a lot of obviously, a lot of corporate interests took sure. advantage of. Oh, okay, it's hip hop fifty, so we're gonna have, we're gonna do all these things. So your question is what now? Like, do you feel that it was positive in general for hip hop? Yes, I do. In general, I just think that, as I said earlier, the detail of where he came from and what it took to get here has not been properly. Represented, and and this is what I say to the PR people and to the press people. Like, if you want to know, like, the, the beginning, 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 you got to ask somebody that's around sixty. You have to. Right. You can't ask somebody thirty or twenty five. You, you you just cannot. And this is why I, I I find it critically important to speak. Is because, like I said, once August twelfth gets here, it's a new trend, new right. shit. You know what I'm saying, Nori? What is it? Five, what is it? Five twenty Cedric. What is it? Um, Fifteen twenty Cedric. Fifteen twenty. That's Herc's place. Mine's is twenty seven thirty Dewey Avenue. So the, uh, that's a two part question. Is that actually the first hip hop party that ever was there? I didn't see it. Okay. I never. I didn't see it. I didn't, I don't know what's here, and I've never talked to anybody that went to this party. And I'm not saying that it didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I haven't seen anybody on the internet talk about I was there. I that's what crazy like that's that's what crazy he said that the discrepancy with that party is one of the biggest contested things really in the history of, he feels that that flyer keeps getting remixed where people keep adding names they, taking uh, names away oh, really? yeah that's he said it on the show right. he said that that's a contested event like not that it happened but how it happened or who yeah. was involved or what yeah I, I I'd love to know who was there and um how the party turn out how many chicks was there versus guys? Will you, will you break it? Like, I, I, I want to know that, too. Like, I want to know the merry-go-round. I want to know what that technique of mine is the quick mix theories. I'd love to know, you know, what was that first party and what's the merry-go-round? When did you first hear about that party? Like, when was it first? Like, when did people start saying this is the first party, identifying it as the beginning of hip-hop? Wow, that is That incredible. you remember. Because that's, that's crucial. You would be the one to tell us because we wouldn't know. That's be- way before our time. Right. You would say, hey, you know what, guys? I really didn't remember this being talked about as much. And that's kind of like what Crazy Legs was kind of talking about. I don't want to. I don't remember. I don't, I I don't know. remember what he said. I can't remember. Because it's all rallying around that point. That's why we're celebrating 50. Right. But then if we're going to celebrate 50, then we got to talk about the party. Who was there? Right. Where it was? What happened? And this is, you know, this is probably probably why he's 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 saying that. You know, like I would respectfully love to sit down with Hurricane 
you know, hit, sit down with his crew. That's why it's crucial that he does what you're doing. It's, it's, it's extremely important. Right. And I can tell you, even on my streams, I have people who were at my parties in the beginning when I was nothing uh, that, that will tell you what my party was like. They, t they remind me of shit that I forgot about. Mm. It's Cookie Monroe, Anna Monroe, Jacqueline Tucker. Like these people, they're still here. And one of them actually works, in my, works with, with me in my company that remembers shit that I totally forgot. And this is what's really critically important because that kind of verifies when you got the layman's and, 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 and the party goers saying, yep, that shit was true and it's verified, I'm still yet to hear, and I'd love to hear, who was at that first party. If it happened at the center, what happened at that center? Right. What was going on? Like, what was happening? We need to know that. It's critical that this happens before August 11th. That's, that's just my opinion, respect. Now, August yeah. 11th will make it 51 years? Yeah, I mean, after that, it becomes uh, 51 years, and then it's over. You know, next 50 years, I ain't going to be here. You, you know, so... Yeah, you do you think, because I remember that was another thing that Crazy Legs was pointing out, was that hip-hop is older than 50. Yeah, he's saying, because... And DMC said this. He said, yeah. documented hip-hop, could is, we can call it 50. But he said hip-hop was happening before that. That's what DM, even DMC was saying that, yeah. Okay, let's define it. If we define it, guys, it's the DJ only. And playing what we call bastard music, the C cuts, the D cuts, the F cuts off the album. That's where hip hop to me, that's where we had no title. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't named yet. That's why it, it could be up for discussion, you know, because there's two ways to look at it. When it was fully formed and all four elements came into, in, into play, mm -hmm. that would make it me, 74. Because that's, that's when Cowboy joined me. But if we go pre, then it was just the DJ. Mm. And the breakers and the graffiti artists. Coco Rock says he's a rapper, but he's not. He was a DJ. I used to go watch him. And if he was talking on the mic, you know, with the echo chamber, it was just rambling. So there are some things that are up that, that are subject. And I, I want to give Herc all his flowers. He deserves everything that he's done. But there are some things that are up for question. And I think either all of us or one at a time, like Coco Rock, um, Timmy Tim, I think he's, he's passed away, Clark Kent, the original Clark Kent, yeah. you know, the, and the, the twins, you know, they gotta start speaking. It would be great if it would be a lot of you guys together because you could cross-reference, debate things, and hash it out at that moment. Speaking on cross-referencing, Wikipedia. They have been extremely disrespectful to me. They're supposed to be the, 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 the standard for information for the world to see, right. old and new, right? They got my birthday wrong. It's 58, it's supposed to be 57. I was born in the Bronx. Their, you know, their process on how they say yes or no to something. I tried even talking with them. They said, Mr. Sadler, I say I did this. They say, Mr. Sadler, there's no reference wow. to you doing this. I'm saying this, they can't be a reference because did Wikipedia it, wasn't born right. then. So you mean to tell me <laughs> all these things that I'm telling you that I did and they kept just, as we was talking with them, they kept knocking like, no, you can't. The beatbox, no. The cutting, no. The quick mix theory, no. Wow. So you, Wikipedia is saying to me, you, there's no reference to this stuff. 
Of course, there's no reference because I didn't talk about it. I didn't start talking for a long time, and I'm going to tell you why. Because talking these things and this math is geeky. And for a long time, geeks weren't cool. Right. So I shut the fuck up for a long time. Now, geeks rule the world. I'm talking. <laughs> We got some Michael Tom hip hop right here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, I, I like um, Wikipedia. Want you hiring me? Yeah, Wikipedia. Hire motherfucking Grandmaster Flash, please. Right. Yeah, hire me. I can really help you with, especially with the historical area and your process on how you say something is credible versus something yeah. that's not. Because they allow people to to go yeah, in there that are friend. like Wikipedia but, approved. To input, but, but it's like they talk, it's, yeah, not, like 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 how can they? You can't for yourself say right, that's wrong, right? They talking in the horse's mouth, like I mean, right, yeah, you talk like you're talking to the person. No, we're sorry. Uh, we'll get back to you. Then we when we get back to them. Uh, we couldn't find no reference. What's you ain't gonna what? find no reference. What are you on? It's, it's There's right. no link when that's links weren't that's available that's at that time. But you know what the reference is? The streets, right? That's the reference. Yeah, no one's right. gonna check you. Who's gonna say that I didn't do it? Right. There's the math and, and the science, and then I physically done it. That, that right. leads me to a thought. Has, and I don't know if you guys brought it up before if, when I went to the restroom, but is there any documentary that you would co-sign and say, this is the best documentary right now that tells you the history? Oh, man, there's so many I've seen. Shit, there's so many that I've seen. Oh... I can't answer that question right now. There was a few that was pretty good. I think like Rebel Kings was really dope. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't see that one. There was oh, and then Fresh I, Dress, which felt like it complimented Rebel King. I don't know if everybody saw that. Saw that, but I felt like those two documentaries. I need back to look to at back, those. I need to look at those. It tells the Bronx history, like what was happening, the, mm -hmm. the gang wars, oh, okay, into hip hop, Great. and all that stuff. I think for me, the documentary that I'd love to see is if someone paints a picture of the beginning, and then slowly take it up here. A, a few of the, a, a, of the documentaries I did see, they're incomplete. They're not wrong. Right, right. They're just holes in it. You know, it, it, you can poke holes in it because you gotta say, wait a minute, if that was that, then how did that get to that? Right. And that there, um, I'd love to see. Right. You ever got to meet Biggie? No. Oh. Wow. How about Tupac? I sat next to Tupac at a gathering, and we talked for a few minutes. But we, I, didn't, I didn't get to talk to these two. I would have, I think, um, when I heard what happened to them two, I cried. I didn't really know them. I never had coffee and tea with them. I didn't know their parents. I didn't know nothing. But they'd done so much for the culture. I think this thing has to stay, if it has to exist, it should stay competitive. Nobody should lose their life right. Right. over this. That there is insane. Like, why did they have to die? Right. And then, here's the crazy shit. Please can't find out who did what, what. It's, it's still a question mark. Right, it's a conspiracy. We don't know nothing. What the fuck is up with that? And, uh, why is it still a conspiracy? And killed in public places where there's mad right. witnesses. <laughs> That there makes me crazy. And them two going at it, east and west, was healthy for hip hop, was healthy competition. Right. But people losing their life, come on. I cried like a baby, and I never met them personally because of what they meant to the culture. Real what about talk. Big Pun? You ever met Big Pun? I met him once for a brief period of time. I didn't get to talk to him much either, no. If, if you get um, asked to do a party right now, and this party is 16 to 21, <clears throat> and they're saying they, they want new music, what is the, a new artist, a new artist that Grandmaster Flash is getting the party, jumping to? Can I be totally honest with you? Yes. Please. I have a lane. And respectfully... If I'm not an expert in what I do in my lane, I don't go near it. I don't know enough about the music, 
that the 16 to 21s love. I couldn't play a two hour set. I, I think don't, that's how you would answer that. I don't, <laughs> I don't know enough uh. to play, to know there's, and Scram could definitely identify, and you eat, there's the nine o'clock record, and there's a record you hold to one o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> I'll probably play the one o'clock record at nine. Like, I will probably <laughs> screw the whole fucking <laughs> shit up. Right. You know what I'm saying? My children, they tell me about records all the time, you know, and I, I check it, but... I am not going to try to be something that I'm not and, and, and service because I'm a servant. And if I can't serve you properly, then I will serve you at all, respectfully. It's, mm. it's like one time I was hanging with Bus, and I might be paraphrasing or um, thinking this in, in, a, in a different form. So if I, if, I, if I get it wrong, then I apologize. Okay. But Bus, one time someone called him and they wanted him to perform at an old school event. And the fact that they called it old school, I didn't think he wanted to participate. You know what I mean? Mm. Because he, he felt like, yo, I'm, I'm, I might be old school to some, but I'm not old school. So he didn't want to participate in that. Is that something like if, if it's like a new school jam, like you don't want to like uh, indulge him because... No, I'm not saying I don't want to indulge in it. I don't get to do him. Just, yeah. I don't write because I'm going to do right. me. Yeah. Right. And they're going to say, what is he playing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to do what we understand. I'm right. going to do what everybody in this room understands. Right. But a 16 year old going to say, what is that? Right. And why are you playing that? Right. We don't want to hear that. And I have nothing, it has nothing to do about whether I love or hate or whatever. I don't know that music enough. And anything right. that I want to put, sink my teeth into, I'm really having to master it and understand right. it and know it so that when I get on them ones, I know where to take you. All right. What, what, what else you got in your notes? Let's, 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 let's. Oh, let's see. Yeah, uh, want to make sure we get everything. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, let me just, I want to make this clear. <clears throat> there are so many DJ techniques that has that has happened. And I wanna make sure people truly understand DJs play turntables the right way. I don't know how to play that way. <laughs> I play DJs, I play it the wrong way. So, there are some of the DJ techniques that I didn't create. There's a few that was a great created by me because everything that's going to last has to be taken to another level. There's incredible DJs out there. What I'm trying to say to the world is the actual, the mechanics of this, putting your fingertips on the vinyl where the vinyl has two purposes, the sound source and also used as a controller. Your other hand on the fader, on the opening and closing the circuit. If you look at any DJ playing, he is using the mechanics, the how to hands, whether you're going counterclockwise, forward and back. You're opening and closing the fader. These mechanics are what I invented. That is the quick mix theory. That I want people to understand, the mechanics, the how-to, the fundamentals of what it is. I don't know how to play where they putting the needle down. I don't know how to do that. It is why I took three years of my life to reinvent DJing, the mechanics, and this led to the rapper, and this led to the producer, and this led to the big business that we are at right now. That's crazy. And they, they fact checked, they said that in fact, Magic Johnson is a DJ. Oh, you can check. Yes. You got the Googlers out there? Yeah, so the group chat. Flash, can I ask you a question? Okay, but before you do that. Yeah. Can I just yeah, can I just yeah. shout out some people, please? Absolutely. Yeah. This is your platform. Let's go. Let's go. These people I'm going to uh, talk about 
made hip hop big business. Dr. Dre, KG, Jermaine Dupri, Diamond D, the Track Masters, the Beat Nuts, Easy Mo B, 45 King, Just Blaze, Timberland, Dallas Austin, Wyclef, Arthur Baker, DJ Scratch, mm-hmm. Egyptian Lover, Herbie Lovebug, The Rizza, mm-hmm. Molly Ma, DJ Toomp, Pete Rock, Rick Rubin, Warren G, Jazzy J, Kid Capri, DJ Battlecat, The Bomb Squad, Kanye West, DJ Premier, Teddy Riley, Manny Fresh, Q-Tip. Please forgive me for anybody. <laughs> for anybody that I did not say, because I know what you guys are gonna, and I'm gonna get help for this when yeah. this, this thing comes out. If I had two years to mention everybody, I would. Mm. But I just wanna say, these people deserve Flowers. What's your question, man? My, my my question is, you just showcase what the fader does, but the fader never existed when they just had the knobs, right. when there was no dual turntable uh, action going on. So, what was what's up? The invention of the fader? Do you have anything to do with it? What when it was created? Okay, let's go back in the rabbit hole. Um, the actual terms for the fader is called the paniometer, mm. and the round knob is called the potentiometer. Oh, shit. You saw the geometer and the pentiometer. Yeah, please research it. You'll find that it's true. Back in the day, the, the, right, the cross fader wasn't there. We were doing the up and downs. Right. Zero All the knobs. Zero to ten. Zero to ten. Zero to ten. The ups and downs. The up and downs. So we, the this, this, the ups and downs. Right. Ups and downs. With, because the fader had to come into play. I seen the fader come into play when it was a company by the name of Gemini. Yep. The DAC. 2000X, Silver Face. That was my first mixer. And when I made that mixer, the industry standard mixer, I have been looking for someone who has that mixer. I'll pay them any money for it. I'm saying it on television because it's a mixer that I brought to to the world. Bring it out, EFN. <laughs> so, and then, and then the first turntables was the SL23s. Mm. That is how I created the seamless loop so that Cowboy and the boys can rhyme. You know, so these are the things I need to talk about. And the break dancers, can I talk about the break dancers too? Of course. You know, uh, let's go to the to the break dancers, see the DJs, the breakers. The breakers, like the original breakers were, um, they were black. Mm. And here's some of the names. Sasa. Trixie. Dancing Doug. Black Jerry. Easy Mike. Flippin' Mike. Female break dancers. Sister Boo. Mm. Mother Earth. Janice. Then as years went on, is where the Latins got involved, Spanish people got involved. Uh-huh. And here's some of the names. Rocksteady Crew, Dynamic Breakers, New York Breakers, Electric Boogaloos, um, here's some soloists, Future 2000, Fab Five Freddy was a breaker, Lady Pink, Scene, Lee Quinones. These are the kind of people I want to talk about because they're part of the story of they're part of this mm-hmm. whole movement. Mm-hmm. That she can't be, yeah, and now we right here. Right. Mm-hmm. And we drive a nice cars and we live in comfortably. So how did the fucking shit happen in the beginning? How did it happen? That's where I'm at. Have, have you ever went to a hip hop show and been disgusted? Like people rhyming over the, vo- the vocals, they're not having no routines, okay. you know? I think, Okay, you're talking about the performance aspect of yes, this. Yes, yes, that's what I meant. My bad. I think it's extremely important if you know your craft. Right. Know your craft with no net, meaning you should not be rhyming over the, the vocal version. Right. Because even if you make a mistake, that's what makes the, right. the, the, the performance so incredible. Right. Like when Jay-Z was at the Garden. And he tell the DJ, throw it, boom, it's the instrumental. 
he would say the rhyme, say the rhyme, and then he would stop rhyming for a few seconds, then he'll he'll jump back on just right. to let y'all know. Yeah. There's no net here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, you know something, Nori, you know what I, I what I would love to see if one of these newer rappers rapped on one of them breaks. Mm. Ooh. Nah, they won't. That would be. Cause some of them, some of them rappers say they're incredible. But to see, like I love to see. I love to get Drake mm. yeah, he could on a break. I love to get Nas mm. on a break. Mm. Jay Z already knows how to do this. You know what I'm saying? Nas done it. Huh? Yeah, Nas. Nas has done it. I don't, I don't know about live footage, but I, I know Nas has rapped over breaks. Yeah. Drake would be dope. Yeah. I, 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 I'm and just, sure Nas did. You know, yeah. let the beat yeah, then break yeah, it down, yeah, yeah, throw yeah. it back in, let I, it break down. Like, yeah. um, uh, I, uh, what's his name? Uh, Red Man and, um, What's his Method partner? Man? Method Man. Oh, they go crazy. And LL Cool J's thing. The, them with the DJ. I said, This motherfucker was it. pulling that shit down and throwing it back in and rubbing it. And, and, and they was, I'm like, that there. And I walked yeah. up to them. Yeah. And I said, that was fucking hip hop yeah. for sure. Wow. And the DJ whose name escaped me, please excuse me, but they were so. When you become one with your DJ, Nori, when you become one where it's no look, mm. like you ain't got to worry, you ain't got to turn around, never. You right. know that when you say what you say, he gonna do what he do, right. he got you like little back. Cold words. Yeah, little cold words. Yeah, little cold words. You know, doing the pull a fader down for one ball, yeah. boom, and bring it right. back. Right. Mm. He know how to do it. Right. That's hip hop. Yeah. Right. All the, all, that's when, like, the DJ's name was always first. Eric B and Rakim, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Grandmaster Grand Master Flash and the, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, that's... Yeah, I think, though, I think, I think it's an injustice to people who pay $40 to come in or $50 yeah. or $100 to go see you to talk, to rhyme over your talking. Yeah, now you're just getting an appearance, but you're not getting a performance. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not fair to, to... Some people call it lip sync. And it's lazy. Even though it's yeah, not lip sync, it's, it's, yeah, lip, lip, but some people, yeah, lip syncing. Uh, lip syncing uh, when you uh, rap, rap rhyme over the vocals. Yeah, I think the rapper should, should, yeah. should, should rhyme to the instrumental of their track and make a mistake if you have to, right. or add a new line yeah, in it and I, then go back I to the, the record. Crowd do it, you yeah, know I mean? or go like put the mic out, let yeah. them say it. Like, it's bring live. the audience into your performance. You, you know what's crazy? You know how I found that out? I did it overseas one time. And and like um, I had to do like an hour show, mm -hmm. and at the time all I was doing was like like you know the hits or whatever. Yeah. So but over there they wanted it was in the contract an hour show. So like yeah. you know in America I do, you know, and as soon as I finished I was like I killed that right, mm -hmm. and they were like, you had the vocals. Wow. And I was like, you thought you were doing a favor doing the, the, the like the hour. hour. I thought I was doing like hour, like an hour, hour. and they were like yeah, yeah we liked that you did an hour but. And I was like, I never did that shit again. <laughs> Word, I had never did that shit again. But it was overseas. It yeah, wasn't yeah. even people in America who school beats it at that first. Overseas is yeah. on point. Let me tell you something. Europe. Overseas don't yeah. fuck around. They take, they take yeah. this hip hop they shit. They nerds like in a good the, way. Like the performance Word. aspect of this shit. Right. They take this fucking shit. Right. Deadly. Yeah, deadly. The like we, 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 we take advantage because we here. Yeah. You fly over that motherfucking ocean and right. you land. Your right. shit better be tight, right. or they gonna let you know. Right. Word up! I remember one time I was—I uh, say this on the show all the time. I went to do a show, and the promoter he paid us and left, and we're like, "What the fuck?" And he came back because he went and did a, a graffiti piece with our name, Capone Noriega. Whoa. And he comes back, his paint all over the shit, and I want to look at him and be like, "Ah, oh, it's not that serious." Like, but, no. but I'm also honored, y'all. I'm also like, you know what I mean? So like, take like he really literally showed us a piece that yes. he, 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 you they know love I mean? you. We don't, yeah. I think that that's the one thing that one of the other things that I think needs to happen in this country is that we need to appreciate this culture because it's appreciated around the world. It's actually one of the, I would say it's one of the biggest cultural exports this country has yes. and has impacted the world, but we're losing our grasp on the world because they are looking at us as sellouts to the culture. Mm. Right. I had a, I had a person. Like I was coming out the back door. Hey man. Right? Of the concert. And this guy hey man. He pushes through the crowd and he takes off his fucking shirt. I'm like, shit's about to hit the fan, fellas. This is getting ready to be a real mean one. He had me, he had a picture of a tattoo of me DJing on his fucking wow. back. I fell to my knees like, whoa. You painted your fucking back. For life, for life. That's there for life. 
They take that shit so serious. So they know serious. Like, yeah, did you have a drink with them? You had to drink with this guy. No, I just gave him a hug. <laughs> yeah, like, no, he made a drink with him. I, 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 I gave him a hug and I jumped in the car and I was like, just quiet all the way to the hotel. Like, this motherfucker. And it looked like he wanted to start a fight with me and fight backwards, but that <laughs> wasn't it. That motherfucker said, look, uh, boom. Big. Nah, they, it's truly appreciated. Yeah, it, it, it's a love thing there. What the fuck? I just... Yeah, this, you got to sign that for me. Don't tell me you don't co-sign it, because then I'm going to be, come on. No, yeah, of course I co-sign this. Of course I, co-sign this. Uh, of course I do. that record? He walked in, he threw your record. Whatever uh, record you had. No, no, no. My, my homie gave it to me. He's uh, like, yeah, 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 I ain't yeah. fucking with that. What but you signed this one for me. I know you're saying you didn't. Uh, this, nah, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you why. Because we was already gone. I know you said it, and I already said it. We already gone. Yeah, like, this record got jerked. That record. Yeah. Yeah, but yep. this here, guys. All right, well, you signing my, my figure right here. <laughs> Jesus that's Christmas. Right. What, what's that record, though? You don't got to say it. Well, what is it? No, that's White Lines. He talked about oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the other one was the sleeve, label. the Sugar Hill record label. Oh, yeah. okay, that's why. Yeah, I prefer not to on this here. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. a couple of things for you to sign. It's all oh, good. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Yes. You guys yeah. enjoying yourself so man, far, man? Yo, listen, man. This is history. We live in history right here. This is history, man. Go ahead, man. You got questions. We want to, let me just, I'll say this and I'll give you the question, man. We wanted to do this for so long, man. You're really, you know what I'm saying? Day one. This is day one, man. You know what I mean? thing that we wanted to do. This is March is eight years of drink champs. Yes. Oh, eight years? Yes. We can't believe it. Yes. Whoa. Yes. A lot of shit like this come and go because it don't last. Right. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yes. It's a lot, lot of, of fucking work. No, work. But, but, but our platform, is, as big as it got, whatever it is, it's always been for people like you. You know, because we are... You know, I might I might be a I, I call myself a major label type of guy, and he calls himself an independent type of guy. Okay. But besides all of that, our heart is hip hop. If oh, you if you it. cut if you cut you cut my my skin, or you, you and we we gonna bleed hip hop. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? You cut my heart, that. we gonna bleed hip hop. I believe that. And that's really what what it is. It's like we have these, uh, but it's the icons, it's the people who paved the way before, it's the people that could tell these stories. Like 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 even us asking about the party in Cedric, and you saying you haven't been there. Like it, it opens up. This mysterious box of hip hop that, like, you know what I mean? Like, Crazy Legs has his version. Mm. You got your version. You, uh, uh, Kool Herc has his version. This Bambada who got his version. There's so many. But the, the, the thing is, it mm. all. Or is in this beautiful pot of hip hop. Yes, it is. It's in this beautiful soup. It's in this beautiful gu- um, yes, gumbo or beautiful yes, whatever it is, it is yes, of hip hop. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yes. And when we get pillars like you, we get legends like you, we get Thank icons you. like you. It, it like I, I think this is one of the most quietest I've ever been. And it wasn't. And I heard quiet. you guys yeah, yeah, go yeah. in. But it wasn't because <laughs> I was quiet because I didn't have things to say. It was Ooh. quiet because I was soaking up the knowledge. And, yes, and as much as I've been, I still learn things. Like I'm still learning. So, so and this is so beautiful. Thank to you. see you to, and, and then a lot of these people you know um like it's, it's so good to see you in great spirits it's so good to see you you know what I mean spreading the uh, of hip hop because so many people like uh, like some of your your statesmen you know they don't they don't open they they self up to people you know what I mean they're like mm. you know what mm. I'm a, I'm a part of the royal family fuck you mm. you know what I'm saying mm. so it, it, it mm. it's vice versa like oh, no I feel it's critically important that, that this 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 information gets shared because you know once again Wikipedia this is not on the internet this is right. not a, a lot of this stuff that that, that mm-hmm. I talked about today was not on the internet it's because I didn't talk mm-hmm. right. You know, and Bam will say the same thing, and Herc will say the same thing, and Breakout will say the, say, say the same thing, you know? And it's wonderful to have platforms like this. Because there's a lot of new type platforms out there. Right. Yeah, yeah. So a platform like this to exactly. say, let us play honor to the people who did things that have passed. That's right. It's wonderful. That's right. Right. Before, before, I think I want to add to what Nori was saying. It's what I think is what we're trying to do, and what's critically important to hip hop. I think right now, most importantly, is that we steer people away the the young generation that looks at at, the, at social media numbers to dictate who are the leaders of mm. the culture. Mm. This is Al- why algorithms. Just just numbers in social media. That's that doesn't matter because what taught us is I remember listening to artists speak about what was going on before I even understood what was going on. And you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm, I'm not from the generation that you guys came up in, uh. but there was the artists I was listening to, my OGs in a sense, telling me, no, these are the 
people that I grew up on. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I respect them. Therefore, I respect you. Then okay. I dig in the crates. I find out about you. Mm-hmm. Then you are, you know who you are to my, in my mind. Right. We need to do that. We need to elevate the, the real you. leaders of the culture, not Thank let you. social media right. or popular whatever dictate this. You are the leader. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Right. So what's up, man? Oh, well, I got to give you my flower, your flowers, too. You know, you invented hip hop. You invented, you invented hip hop. You invented rap music, and you invented turntablism. And that's what I've been obsessed with my whole life. And thank you, man. And, and, you are and, incredible on them once, baby. Uh, thank you, man. But yeah. but it's just crazy that you actually. It's actually surreal that you invented what we do on them turntables, mm. and you invented rap music because there would be nobody rapping over them break beats if you wasn't bringing them back and passing the mic off to Cowboy or whatever so it's kind of surreal when you really think of that so that's just to dumb it down for the listeners like you are, you are the number one inventor I'm just gonna give you that you know what I'm saying you oh, the Thomas you. Edison so you know what I'm saying I just wanna say that be, not, beat, not beat around the bush now what's, the, got- what's the dude that invented the peanut? <laughs> Oh yeah, he, we have George Washington Carver. Oh, George uh, Washington Carver, yeah. Carver. Yeah, Carver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the Carver, this motherfucker. Nice. You, no you make you work wonders with a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> you make you did all type of shit with a peanut. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, thank you. Yeah. So, so I got two questions and I'm jumping around, but Let's all go. your stories was in the Bronx. Yeah. My question is, what was your relationship with the other boroughs? What was going on with hip hop? Mm. Did was you tapped into Queens and Brooklyn and Staten Island? What was they doing, or were you even, or were you in your own little bubble? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, did you even know what was going on in Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island? Good question. Okay, and this is, I think I said this earlier. Um, well, Hollywood did. Mm-hmm. Hollywood, Hollywood would do five parties in one night. Mm-hmm. So what we started doing was renting a sound system that wasn't ours, because that's what takes the longest to take it apart and all yeah. shit. Renting a sound system, renting other DJs and, and, and hip hop groups, we would perform for like an hour, jump in a car, go to Queens, mm. play, jump in a car, mm. play Brooklyn. So. We knew what the five boroughs was doing. It's just that the the major ones, which was Herc, myself, Bam, Breakout, um, uh, a lot of us didn't move around like that. I definitely moved around to see who was going to be the next Kingpins in Harlem because they were right next door to us. Mm. And then from, from there, it went to Brooklyn. And then from there, it went to Staten Island. So all these places. But what did you see? Were they way behind the Bronx? Or they was they was they had their own little movement? This is what I would hear. We heard the tapes. Mm. And hearing the cassette tapes, we was asking ourselves, how the fuck is he doing that? Mm-hmm. That's how the word got around when we got near town to plays. Like, we want to see you do that live because on the mixtapes, mm. this shit sounded impossible to do. Mm. So that was like our audio flyer, and that played a major role and allowed me to go to different boroughs and, and, and get an interest on, we want to go see these motherfuckers do this shit live, and we did. So that's how we started to figure out what was buzzing in the other boroughs. But were they following the Bronx, or were they, or were they just They were following the Bronx because they knew what we was doing. Okay. And like, yeah. we was listening to y'all tapes. Copy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how they figured out what we was doing. If they weren't able to make it to the Bronx, the tapes was the next translator on how we was doing what we was doing in the Bronx. Uh. So another question. A lot of people got their flowers. Yourself, Cool Herc, but obviously Bambada was excluded. Do you think he should have been excluded this year due to what was going on? I would never exclude him. And no, let me tell you, you, you well, didn't exclude him. I'm talking about the masses. I didn't see any tributes to and him. And I cry about that. Let me tell you something. I, don't, I still don't know... How that, that case, let's call it that case. Yeah. How it's going to turn out or what's going to happen. But you can't deny history. I cannot. There'd be a big hole in this story if I took him out of the mix of me speaking. It'd be, a, and then somebody would catch me out there. Okay, well, when the gangs were around, what were you doing then? When I'm lying, say, oh, uh, well, the gangs was in the, no. Bam turned him around. It's just, he plays a major role in this shit, man. And the situation that he's in, I can't judge it. I am not a lawyer. I'm not whatever whatever, whatever it, it was and how it happened. He 
played a major role. He is a king in this culture, hands down. Okay, last question. Blondie, mm. how did you meet her? Was she the first female rapper? What was the whole thing with Blondie? Shaw Rock was the Shaw first Rock. female. Yeah, we were no, I know okay. it's Shaw Rock, but now I'm let me tell you, at Let me tell you how that, how that went down. Vampire Freddy used to come to my parties. Yeah. And he said, yo, I got some friends in Soho. You know, Blondie, you know, and her husband. You know, they're good friends of mine, man. And, and you know, one day I'm going to bring them up. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, yeah, man, I, these are my friends. I'm like, really? He kept his word. She seen me. And she made it absolutely clear to Freddie, I'm going to write a song about the way he does those things on the turntable. Freddie told me, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And all of a sudden, in between, like when you record an album, you rest. Flash you back. record an album, and then you rest. During the rest period, people say, yo, you got a record on? I said, nah, we, we, we resting. There's some record with some woman talking about cars and bars, and the, I'm Flash like, is what Flash the is fuck good. is this? What is... And then when I heard it, I'm like, oh shit. She kept her word. She called Sugar Hill and asked him, can I be in a video? And Sugar Hill said, no. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you weren't in that video. I seen the video. And that's why the other one, other person, played the role in that. And I say this over and over again, because what would have happened is, if I'd have got on that video, the DJ world would have went to... To the moon. To, to, to Pluto. Because I would have definitely took that light. Right. And I'd have said, yo, it's like 500 more bus motherfuckers back home. Boom, boom, boom. Promoters, the whole shit. Mainstream. Mainstream, boom. But she said no. So I never got on that. But I thank Blondie for bringing me into uh, white people and Germany people and, and that other world. I needed, I needed to get in that world because I didn't want this thing to just be just black. Or what just year, Latin. What year was that, though? I'm just trying to like put it this in. Like, is, you said Rock. Uh, you said Shaw Rock was in the 70s. So Blondie made that 80s, record. Early yeah, 80s? Yeah, early, early 80s. Yeah, because now, you know, when we're making records now. We're in the record business now. Is that close to when Wasta was, was filmed? No, no, no. Uh, Wasta probably was a few years back from that. From that, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, shout out, and shout out to Charlie with that, man, to, do, to come in and, and, and do what he did. Uh, that was wonderful as well. And I, and I can remember I was staying there all day waiting to get shot, and then it started raining. And Charlie had to return the camera back. It was a Sunday. He had to return the camera back to the uh, movie house Monday. So they had to drop me off home. We never got to shoot me. The uh, shooting team, the producer's team says, we got to use the bathroom. I said, sure, come upstairs. Cypress Avenue on 38th Street. Um, the shooter says, yo, Charlie, who's a producer, why don't we shoot Flash right there? Charlie says, right where? Because I had a kitchen that had a, a, a cutout. You can look into the kitchen from the living room. And the counter was right there. So the shooter says, let's shoot Flash right there. Charlie says, this is not going to work. He says, yes, it can work. So they shut up, shot up all the cameras. I cut Mardi Gras. Hmm. And that came one of the biggest scenes in the whole, the whole movie. So shout out to Charlie, you know. Um, and that's another story that needs that's to be told. That's one of about. the first representations on film, right? Yeah, absolutely, the first. Absolutely the first. And he cared enough to come into the Bronx and, 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 and film us, you know. It, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And with 50 years from now, the kid's going to look at this. And they're going to say, oh, shit, they came back and looked. You know, because it's like you said, either we allow the powers that be to rewrite the narrative. Right. Or you go find the people who wrote the narrative and let them tell you the narrative. Right. right. And that's what makes this place, this thing you guys are doing Thank you. so wonderful. Thank you. So, so wonderful. So a director comes to you, say... For lack of a, for the first person I think of, Al Pacino and Antoine Fuqua. Okay. Together, <laughs> together. comes to you and says, Flash, I want to do a movie about hip hop. Mm. Is this movie about you by yourself, or is this movie 
them four people you've been naming this whole time. It's always them four people, but it's not even the so four hold on, people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish my question. Go ahead, because, go ahead, go ahead. Because this is now we're getting to the lucrative part. <laughs> go ahead. Because they saying, yo, you want a movie about hip hop? We don't mind if it's you or this four. If it's you, you eat this whole bag, whatever this bag is. But you, will, we could take the story you from, from, from you, from you, and weeks. you could break down these four stories if we could get it from you. Or do you want to consult these other two, the other three people? Do you consult them, or do you take the whole bag and say, "I'm going to tell the story"? That's the position you're putting them. No, I go get them. Uh, that, no, it's not. The and same I split the bag up. I have to. Okay, I have to because I what's like going to happen? Answer. You know, and, and, and the reason why I have to is because I don't have the complete, complete, complete this like have a It's all the perspective. Right. Yeah, I don't have that story. I have. I have what I seen in public, but I don't know mom and dad, their mom and dad's right. story. I need, I need that. And then we have our second tiers. They play a major role to, to continue to push it as well. So I'd have to go back and say, you, this is what it is. All right. Do we do this together or do we not? I want us to sit down for free. And I've been saying this shit for you the guys past need to do five this. Need to do years. This. I would love for us to be somehow involved in this. And to put the cameras wherever and just let us just talk. It, it, it's like it, it, the Mount Rushmore. Just call it the Mount Rushmore with your four. This would be absolutely wonderful because I'm sure that our stories run parallel. Some way or somehow, it runs parallel. And then for you guys that are watching, it'll all come together like, oh, that connected to that, to that connected to that, and that connected to that, and that's why that is that. And that's what you don't have yet. We don't have that story where we're all there. Herc is not well, but he's got a team of people. Bam is in a situation, he's got a team of people. Break out, bring yourself, I bring my team, and let's just sit here and just have, I like, I eat fish only. Just get me some lobsters and some crabs <laughs> and shit, lots of that, and I'm good. And I'll sit here and, and we, we need to go. commit to that. We need to commit <laughs> to helping him. Like that. That, that could be a Dream Challenge Presents. Oh we don't have to be God. there. You guys yeah, you yeah, to be, yeah, you know, yeah. be the guys who oh, the game. We into, but you look, guys would be the guys who nah, the game. I, I, I want to commit to us yeah. trying Hell to make yeah. that Hell happen. Yeah. We definitely. But let me ask you, right? Because me and EF, and it's something that we, we've been saying since we started the show as well, is that the hip-hop should have our own union, right? You know what I mean? Other than all the sports and all the, all the other you know, people, who, um, entertainers, mm. um, other than boxing, hip-hop is the only other, like, Entertainment uh, 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 form that doesn't have unions. When you and say union, what do you mean by union? Like SAG, like, like a SAG. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, like insurance and, you know. No, like a SAG. Tool, like a SAG. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like an actor's union. Okay, so let me throw the question back at you. What, would be, what would be the duties of this union? To take care of our people if, if, if in need. I mean, this is what I would. Okay, let me expound on that. I, cool. I love this. I love cool. this. Cool. If we can make a union. That would police our own. If a person is in trouble, if he's getting in trouble, send him to the union. Like there's too many rappers, you can see them on the way to going to prison. Right. And they right. should right. from their own. Right. Yeah, let's send them to the We got right. it. We got it. Right. 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 Yeah. It's, it's, before it, it, the car crash, let's... Before the car crash, let's right. grab them. Right. Listen, hello. Right. Because some of the... Because some of these hip hoppers may not have elders, people around them to say, listen, you know, you're getting ready to crash. Right. If we could police our own, a lot of the shit that happens today would not happen. Right. That's just how I see it. We should police... Our own. It's a great, great idea. Nori, um, hopefully before I leave out of here, I would love to see. Well, Chuck D and, and Karis and I think uh, Curtis Blow, they they created something. And Rock Kim and them just received something. That's aligned with it. Well, that's Nas yeah. that created that fund. Right. Yeah, but see, but the, the, what, what I love about what Nas is doing, I think it is absolutely wonderful. No, that's beautiful. What, huh. I think it's so beautiful, but there's so many people. That's the thing. That are much more needy. Was Rakim worth that? Absolutely. Was Scarface worth that? Absolutely. But Earth. there are three other elements of people that don't have, right. that are struggling. Doing that, and if he'd have done it the full, the four element way, would have made that shit so much. Right. 
speaker. There's a lot of unsung heroes. Yeah. That, that need their dues, and, and the reason why I think SAG is such a good example of of a, of a type of union is because SAG is whatever you give to give into SAG, you get out of SAG. So that allows everybody at every level of hip hop to be a part of this union. Wow. SAG even has, and I mean, again, I don't know 100%. I'm, I'm not a scholar of SAG. I actually just joined SAG recently, but they have housing for like B actors that never made it big in oh, Hollywood that shit. when they become homeless, if they become homeless, they can live in these homes. Oh, thank God. Oh, wow. But, but you know, as long as they, their dues were, you know, they, had, they were members for a certain amount of time. So I think that SAG is a good thing for us to look at. I think that that the Chuck D and them are, are aligned with SAG in some way. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look. But the problem is, is that it's such a big undertaking that you need someone that's well schooled in finance and banking mm -hmm. and, and insurance sure. to be able. And nobody like we all talk it. Yeah, but to, to, to do the mechanics of that, that's it. That, I, I, that, that, Killer that, Mike, that, that, I think Killer Mike can do it. Oh, I love Killer Mike. Killer I think Mike Killer is Mike, amazing. I love Killer Mike. I give Killer Mike all the money. Go ahead. I love Killer Mike. Go ahead, I, Killer I, Mike. I, actually, when I heard the name, I'm like, damn, this must be a real motherfucker, Killer motherfucker. Nah. I went to an He's event. A teddy bear. I went to a family <laughs> event in Atlanta, and he was there. And I sat down with this guy. This guy is. Off the hook, intelligent, like right. totally. Oh, he's incredible, man. Oh, he's incredible. I hope he Does wins he that Grammy. I hope he wins oh, that Grammy this year. God. I hope he wins the Grammy. He's up for a Grammy. Yeah, he's up for a Grammy. I hope he, he wins get it. Get that shit. Yeah. Intelligent gentleman. Yeah. And really nice guy. Really, really nice guy, man. I don't know if that name fit him though, Killer Mike. But yeah, he should switch it. He's like nice Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. You know he's what I mean? He's killer with the words. That's yeah, killer oh, MC. Killer MC. Fair enough. Fair enough. Accept it. So let me, so I, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm black, but I'm half Puerto Rican too, right? Mm -hmm. What was the first Puerto Rican you ever seen in the, in the, the hip hop? Or they were always around, keep it real. DJ Charlie Chase. Charlie, Charlie Chase, Chase. Charlie, 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 Charlie Chase. Rock. The first Puerto Rican DJ ever. See, this, see, as you guys ask these stories, you know, to go from here to there, it's ludicrous. Yes, it is. We just had ludicrous on the show as well. <laughs> 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 it's it, oh shit! It's, it's, it's yeah, DJ Charlie Chase mm -hmm. and the the group he used to DJ for was the Cold Crush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he has a story. Yeah, I know. I've been knowing him for decades. Yeah, we Charlie Chase is ready to come on drinks. We, yeah. He lives in Orlando. We gotta uh, have him on. Yeah, you should, yeah. you should have him on. Yeah, he got stories. Mm -hmm. I only got a smidgen of what he is. Only he could tell. Right. All right. His story, and that's huh? Dominicans. No, no, the Dominicans. You ain't gotta get them. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm god! Of course, of course, of course, of course. That's fucking crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up, baby? What's but now, now, listen, man. Let me just tell you, man, one more time, this man. How much we appreciate this? Yeah. A lot of you, man. This is what we do it for. You know, I call Scram Jones. I call my um, DJ Butch Rock. Who oh, Scram Jones is my DJ and Butch Rock. You know, they're both kind of mm -hmm. my DJs, and I wanted them to come in. Mm -hmm. Because I know how honored they are in the DJ field. As much as I am as MC, as honored to that. Thank it's you. always DJs. They they the people that um, not only throw flowers at your feet, but they're even the ones that pick the flowers to throw to, to your feet. Thank you. And I want you to know how appreciated you are in hip hop in its totality, but in the elements of hip hop. That's why I wanted the other DJs to come and and help me throw the flowers at Thank your you. feet. Thank you. I appreciate because it. you are the Princess Zamunda. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you are you are exactly you know hip hop royalty you are uh, 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 um, I, I was you, there's no artist in the world especially a hip hop artist that you should be able to call and they not answer you within 24 hours no I've been I've been blessed I, I, they, 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 they do answer we know we know we know Flash let's, take, let's give you flowers <laughs> we know that but what I'm just saying what I'm saying is thank you so much if any artist is out there listening from a 12 year old artist to an artist that's 212. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> if this man call, you drop your grandmama's pancakes out your mouth. <laughs> you spit the Tic Tac out your mouth. You unlace your Balenciaga slippers. And you get to this man, whatever the fuck he asks you for. If he asks you to eat a honey bug in your nose... <laughs> You know, you do it. If he asks you to clip your toenails with watermelon pills, what? you do it. If he asks you to put oranges 
in your espresso <laughs> and drink it as coffee mates, you do it. <laughs> There's nothing in this world that this man should ever need, ask, or want. Oh, man, that's right. And as long as Drink Champs is alive, we're going to be there to help facilitate we that. Back, we Thank you. We Thank will you be so much. served. Wow. <laughs> we're going to take a couple pictures. Yeah. 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 Yeah.